welcome to Have Movies Will Game, the only podcast on the globe where we take you, our friendly listener, to the best and worst movies of yesterday and today, and then discuss ways that you can play them at your gaming table. But the fun doesn't stop there, no sorry. Every few episodes, our intrepid hosts, Matthew, Dusty, and Nathaniel, will ask you, the listener, to vote on which movie they will play as an RPG, recorded in video and in glorious black and white, and brought to you through the electronic wonder of the internet. Now, let's start the show! Should we do this? Should we, should we do this? I think we should. I think it's we should. time for the intro! <laughs> I have to follow that. You Hi, do. I'm Matthew! <laughs> and I'm Dusty. <laughs> and I'm Nathaniel. And we have two very special guests with us in the studio today. <laughs> I'm Cranny from Turtle Power Pod. And I'm Bassam from Turtle Power Pod. We're both from Turtle Power Pod! That's and, right! <laughs> and they both like the Ninja Turtles, Love because em. this week is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the movie from 1990. As if there was any others. Well, there are some remakes. I mean, uh, Casey Jones is basically yeah. Eddie Vedder in this movie, right? Essentially, oh, God, that's like right. <laughs> I kept wanting him to sing oh my live God. the whole time. Oh, God, I can't get that song out of my head now. <laughs> Just him swinging that <laughs> yeah. No, well, welcome, mean, guys. Welcome. When, when you, Thank when, you for having us. Oh, yeah. When, when you hear his voice, though, <laughs> when you hear his voice, it's like, my name's Casey Jones, your purse grabbing pukes. And I mean, it, it sounds like Eddie it's Vedder. It's very 1990s grunge. Yeah, yeah Eddie Vedder. We're, really we're used to the animated show, so it's literally it's like Eastwood. Ripoff. Yeah, it's like, prepare to make my day, you fucking bitches. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's more like Wolverine. I mean, like uh, the, the X-Men oh, yeah. Wolverine. I'm so, yeah. best at what I do. So yeah. your podcast is all about the animated show. What do you do? So we watch <laughs> the uh, classic 1980s Ninja Turtles cartoon and then talk I about that show. It, yeah. <laughs> it's a piece of shit. Much better than the movie. Oh, the movie is <laughs> so... No, the movie is no, way better. The movie is better. not. This, the movie is wait, wait, miles wait. ahead. This movie is better. This, this yeah. movie is way better uh, than... Yeah. I really uh, liked the one from 2009, TMNT. Me too. The yeah. CGI I one. I know it got really bad yeah, reviews. Yeah, the CGI. I didn't, get it. I think the I didn't CGI watch is okay. it. I didn't yeah. watch it. It got I, bad I like reviews from people that I don't think were actually Ninja Turtles fans. Yeah, I, I don't get so why people hate that. So did this one, but I'm assuming Dusty's going to get into that. Yeah, there's, like. there's, some, there's some little gems that I mined for this movie. So but, I do uh, have a really fast. Why don't you guys tell us a little bit more about your, uh, your podcast? All right, yeah. So it's called Turtle Power Pod, and me and Cranny here, um, we basically watch every episode in order, and then we talk about it for... An hour, hour and a half. <laughs> uh, most of it tangents, most of it bullshit skits that we kind of think up and, and, uh, doing the, doing the interim between sound clips from the show. But typically it's just us shitting on it for about an hour. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's, it's, unfortunately, the, the animated show is not how you remember it. It's not very good. When, how I we remember, remember it fondly. fondly this so. movie was not oh, how we I remembered, remembered it, it fondly. Oh, yeah. Right. Remembered being the keyword. It's not good. So, it's real bad. It's 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 all a marketing ploy to get kids to beg their parents to spend money on GI oh, Joe's and Transformers. Transformers basically. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Do Nathaniel. you have plans to take it beyond the initial eighties? And if you manage to there make your a podcast lot of those keep going, 80s. so there's a hundred and ninety three. There's a hundred and ninety three episodes. <laughs> We're about halfway through, right? <laughs> We're. Oh no, we are not. We're like a third through. We're about so, a third through. I remember. Remember maybe five episodes of that from my childhood. The and first five, the only Kang, good five. the only good one. Oh, I remember all the little jokes, but the episodes specifically that I remember, I had. Okay, so again, we talked about gadget prior. Mm-hmm. I had the biggest crush on Ow. Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa's pretty hot. She's yep. pretty hot. Yeah, she's pretty she's hot. She's only in like two she's episodes. Only in one episode. We, we oh one episode. We, we, we haven't even gotten to one her. episode. We yeah. haven't gone to her yet. But she's turn. But she's part a big part of the comics. Well, who's the really? wo- who's the woman ninja oh, wow. that we were introduced to um so it's not karai it's lotus it's lotus yeah before karai existed in the cartoon oh man we're getting deep uh, in <laughs> in the no, cartoon in the movie yet yeah for two episodes in the cartoon there is a uh, woman that Raphael's interest or leonardo is interested in called the lotus correct she's like a super awesome ninja is she a turtle right? she is not she's no a human. she's a yeah you're a regular and woman she's not even part of the foot clan or anything right and there are thoughts that she is the motivation for Karai from the comics, because Lotus actually showed up first. Oh. And this is super geeky, but Karai is like the love interest mostly for, where Mona Lisa is like 
the tough chick that that Raphael loves. I know. I was um, on the Raphael. Fan. She's one yeah. of the few well written characters uh, that's female in the cartoon. The literally the only one. Lotus. Yeah, <laughs> if you are into women's rights at all, don't pay attention to any female in the Ninja Turtles cartoon until. Until this character. Until yeah, right? Lotus. For oh, sure. one episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, one episode. <laughs> for one episode, there's a reprieve. <laughs> yeah. That's the early 90s. Yeah, that was... Uh, Different yeah. times. Different that, that, that's times. when the writers went, well, we'll throw them a bone. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. the shows were marketed towards boys and girls were icky. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. April. Yeah. The whole movie was that way, too, pretty much. Even the stance of those early toys, though. I mean, those were He-Man painted green, basically. Yeah, they were. They yeah. really were. Legged. Except yep. for the Usagi Yojimbo toy, which was articulated. Yeah. Because... All the fans of the comics, uh, they did it to please the fans of the comics so that you could actually take the toy and then pose it yeah. in ways that he could hold the sword with both hands and do the cool stances. I have it. It's I awesome. I always hold my sword with both hands. That's a pro tip for you at home. If you hold it with one I hand, you're one above and loser. one like way below. That's just me, though. Effing. Why did I say effing? <laughs> you're a fucking loser. <laughs> <laughs> so those of you that haven't seen the movie, it is came out in 1990 as the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And if you haven't seen this movie, leave. leave. Go watch no, it. No, I'm fine. You don't have to watch this movie. Yeah. This movie's fucking horrible. What? What? Yeah, what? I'm sorry. What? I, I could not... Hey, Dusty, Dusty, this moment, <laughs> how you feel right now... Is about how you feel about Valerian? Is, 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 is how I feel every time I defend a villain on this podcast. <laughs> Everyone's no, screaming. No, that's fair. And, okay, no. that's fair. That's it. You, you wait, you wait. No, because <laughs> dudes and dudettes, Major League butt kicking is back in town, and it's uh, coming for Dusty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's based off the comic book of the same name. It was released on March 30th, 1990, and the film presents the origin story of Splinter and the Turtles, their initial meeting between them, April O'Neil, Casey Jones, and their first confrontation with the Shredder. Bum, I bum, just bum. like to say that comic book. A oh, the plus. comic Fucking book. A plus. Okay, wait, no, no, okay, let me. Okay, let me. Hardcore. Yeah. The this comic movie is a love letter just, to the comic. Hang fans. on. The comic book I loved. See, that's exactly how it feels. It's I yeah. love the comic it. book. Defend I actually, yes. I actually love the animated series. This movie, I couldn't. I tried. I rewatched it yesterday. I tried rewatching it today. I could not get past the same point. That was when they get to the farmhouse. I had to shut it off at that Why? point. What? Why? I just, it was, that's like the Casey's got his moves. That's, it the, was, that's oh, all man. the character growth God, right it was, there. There was, there was such bad acting. I mean, what it was horrible. What the fuck? Were their facial expressions? That's, the first, with, no, I, that's <laughs> the first time as a child. That's I, the first time I ever cried for a legitimate emotional oh, reason. Oh, my God. God. Their, their whole commune with... With Splinter, the oh ghost my is god! Ah, even last night, as an adult, I was like a little <gasps> misty. Maybe, little far, maybe it was because I know how misty. Maybe it was because I know how much was actually cut from that point on in the movie, but that didn't help the script at all. But it, I just everything up to that point, I was just like, oh god, on, just fucking shoot me now. And now I do know how you feel, and I'm going to apologize right now. I'm going to say something. Wait, 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 wait. You have said are, this. Are, are you saying? Are you, are you saying that you were wrong, Dusty? I know when I can admit that. Both well, of you have I, said I think, this. No, I, I think are you, you admitting admit it, though? For the record. Yeah. <laughs> I think Matthew would like a formal written apology. <laughs> Matthew would probably like a formal hand job, but he's not going to get it either. A formal he hand formal job? Formal hand job? What is that, pinky out? <laughs> Both of you have said this. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stab someone because it's my turn. Both I'm of not you have said done this yet. in former episodes. This huh. is my turn. What you got? Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> But, so, um, yeah, that's what it sounds like. Well, yeah, I, I admit, I, I, uh, yeah, I admit it. Okay, fine. If um, I can make one point, one. I feel like. Can you do it in the Rick voice? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez, Cranston, I'd what? really like to know your point. <laughs> uh, I don't know about this. Morty, the problem is uh, you haven't been watching the, sh the animated show uh, like we have. And, you know, I think it's reasonable that you don't like the movie as an objective opinion. But, Morty, you know, some people have to sit through and watch every fucking animated episode, and they're fucking atrocious. Yeah, you don't oh, know how good you got it. And sometimes the movie, you know, <laughs> it's about a million times better. That sounds so real I think bad, it's, I think it's all about perspective. Oh, uh, I think I... your perspective's fucking warped, man. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. 
first fucking That was class. awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I would like to note that uh, we are drinking heavily throughout this. Yeah, episode, we, we really so. are. I, what um, are we drinking, Matthew? Old Granddad bottled in Bond bourbon whiskey. And uh, they, God's they, bourbon, they if our you will. guests have old German premium lager. Hell yeah, five forty nine six pack tall boys. <laughs> and well. I have I have uh, my Malibu coconut rum because I'm I'm like that. Yeah, you also don't like this movie, so <sighs> I have taste. It's all. Mm. I do, do you feel like it's all about. <laughs> your shots, your shots, shots are burn. coconut rum. Sick I have burn. a point to make. You know what? I don't even agree with you, but that was a sick burn. Bro. <laughs> that, was a sick. that was a sick burn. But might I say, just saying, shots of coconut flavored Malibu rum have are, are not good. I, I, do I like not it. do that. No, I do them all the time. Kids, I go ahead OGD and that thank you very much. Kids, go so, ahead and break into your kids uh, into your dad's liquor uh, closet and see me, if he click. has that. No, all right, go. so going into this movie, we have the cast. So we have Judith Hogue as April O'Neil. She stuff. was did a lot, tons of TV bits through her entire career. Can we career. talk about her short shorts for a Hang second? On, we'll get to all that. We better. Uh, and Those then, but she was also nice. most notably in Cadillac Man with Robin Williams. Oh yeah, and then also played Chick's wife in Armageddon. If you oh, guys, that's the, right. The yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. Guys. So, okay, so what would her alignment be? We we always go into the alignments of the characters. I oh, would sh- say neutral good. Neutral good. Matthew? I had her as chaotic good because she did some strange things that, what? Not, I that were unlawful. I agree. I don't know. With... She was committed to fighting crime. Oh, that, I, that's and, one thing, yeah. but not a huge proponent of law. I so disagree. Sure. I think that. Neutral good is a great ranking for her because she middle. never committed like an act against another person. She hit that guy when she was hiding in the rafters with a pool cue. The, that was so you good mean when Mikey like, keeps directing her. He's like, a Funk. child, a child led astray. <laughs> oh, come on. A <laughs> yeah, child led astray that's trying to physically harm people. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to have to go with Matthew's I think she's, chaotic. I, the reason I'm going with neutral is because I feel that she's kind of there in the middle. The reason I'm going with neutral is because Casey Jones and Raphael are chaotic good. Oh, okay, we'll, we'll get to them. We'll get <laughs> <Yeah>. to them. <laughs> uh, wh- what I'm, about you? I don't know, Cranston. man. I hadn't <laughs> thought about this until you just asked, and I've been drinking. So go with your gut. Go with my gut. Oh God. Okay. We're gonna do this through each character, just so you know. I'm gonna say that April is good, and I guess I'm gonna go with. Uh, I guess probably chaotic. All right. Fair enough. Uh, then we have Elias Cotius Cotes, who played Casey Jones. Uh, he also was in a lot of TV bits, but is also credited in Shutter Island. Dancing at the Blue Iguana, which is a good Sandra O oh movie. If you guys ever get a chance, it's an HBO movie. Sandra O? Oh? Yeah, she's on Grey's Anatomy. No, was. I don't know. Grey's what? Whatever. Oh, it's don't the most, you don't know. The most exactly. I've never <laughs> seen an episode okay. of the show. Yeah, but you know what it is. <laughs> yeah, you know what it is. He was also an apt pupil. Isn't that like the OC, but just with my no, favorite uh, pupil? Who was he an apt pupil? Apt pupil uh, Gandalf. I forget. His, for some reason, I'm blanking on his real Ian name. Ian McCullen. Thank you. Yes, it was based off a Stephen King novella. Yeah, I, I saw apt pupil. Who okay. was he in that? Uh, he was the Nazi. Oh, the <laughs> Nazi. And it goes quiet for two seconds. Elias Coates. What? Elias Coates. Oh, oh, I thought you meant. Gandalf. No, because I, I was like Gandalf I, was <laughs> the Nazi. Well, the ex Nazi. Uh, I forget what Elias Coates was. Didn't know that about him, did you? Hobbits? And then he was also in. Uh, it was probably just Casey Jones again. <laughs> probably. <laughs> he uh, was this uh, is the punishment. For but Nazis. he just beat up Nazis with hockey sticks. And They're taking was, the hobbits to Isengard. <laughs> And then he was also in Tucker the Man in His Dreams. Oh, I remember that Is one. Is that yeah. the sequel to Tucker and Dale versus Evil? No, that was no. the car one. That was the car one with Jeff Bridges. Never Jeff saw Bridges. It. Dude Dude Tucker and Dale was way better. Dude, where's my Tucker? <laughs> <laughs> so what would what would Casey Jones' Kinda, alignment yeah. be? Chaotic good. Chaotic good? They use the vigilante. Matthew? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cranston? I think he's got a code, so I would probably say like uh, lawful neutral. I, I was going to say lawful neutral. Interesting. Hmm. Because of the code? Because of the code. Yeah, he's yeah. very particular, but he is he's first to strike. He is definitely not a self defense kind of guy. He could be lawful good. He has like this no. air about him like, no, he's like because he I doesn't give a reason. fuck about things. No, because no, no, I think no, that's deep, a oh, you know, you're right, you're right. That's a character trait and an alignment trait. You're right. He follows a set of laws and he is good. But if anyone goes against him, he immediately is against that person. Well, that, that's true. He Paladins. also l- l- hold on. L- l- let's take it this way, though. He he works entirely outside the law, but which I think good doesn't necessarily that. have to be the local law. So he has his own law. law. It's his own yeah. code. I think but he that's has. Why his, I'm it's thinking not like he's neutral. the fucking Punisher. I mean, 
Well, no. Punisher would be lawful neutral. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Maybe lawful neutral because Casey Jones is basically the Punisher version. But without the guns. He's a copy of the Punisher. I feel like Casey in the Jones in the comic have... books. Okay, in the comics, yeah. I thought you, I'm staying with the movie. Now, the with the movie, he's with. trying to be close to the comics. So I'd still say for the universe he exists in, it's lawful neutral. I feel I, like he I can acts more that. ridiculous yeah. than he actually feels inside. Like he's got this like machismo that he has to get out. But I feel like when you actually boil him down to his core, he absolutely has a code that he has to follow. Especially in the cartoon. He's a lot more. He's kind of quippy and for he's, Lawful, yeah. though. You know, for Neutral, though, he is... Lawful he is, is not boring. He is really compelled to go help them out on the rooftop when he sees Raph getting his ass That's true. Yeah, that's that very true. true. Yeah. 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 He seems very focused on helping these people. He doesn't All right, I can know. accept that. Okay. Yeah. Then we have Corey Feldman, who voiced Donatello. <laughs> who, as we all know, was in those eight those those great movies of the eighties: Goonies, Stand by Me, The Lost Boys. I fucking love that guy. And Dream a little dream. <laughs> There's some movies you recognize. Finally, <laughs> <laughs> I Most remember. Of, hang on, hang on. Most of the <laughs> cast in this movie, except for Donatello. All worked in TV and like nothing yeah. but TV, and this was like their first major. Well, outing. I mean, it was practically yeah. Shakespeare. I can't believe they didn't I, get A list actors. This is yeah. one of the reasons why I didn't like it. Uh, but yeah, okay. So we Corey Feldman, Matthew. Right, we're we're going to have to have this out about the, the you didn't like it thing. Yeah, this is like this is like the generation after mines. This is their big okay. trouble in Little China. This is my this is this a big Transformers. Deal. Not big trouble in Little China. Oh, I could draw like sixteen parallels. Okay. Okay. You know how we could. You know how big of a tangent we can go off on this, and how much outtake this would be. (laughs) We just had a four way. Oh, get the four way -way fist bump. Oh, we got a four way morning. Can I? Can I say something real quick? Sure. Sure, Bassam. It's Bassam. You. Oh, Bassam. Sorry. No, that's fine. Say it right or get out. Yeah. (laughs) Get out of my house. Listen. (laughs) This is our house. What I was gonna say. Mm -hmm. This movie is like a love letter to the cartoon. And bringing it back to its adult roots, right? And because of that, I think there's a lot of things that, when you're watching it, don't really, might not resonate with you, but I think has a lot of, like, fuck what people think. We want to make the fans of the comic book happy again. Yeah. I can get that. I I mean, I appreciate the movie. I just... Okay, so I'm a big fan of shitty movies like The Scorpion King okay. and Scorpion P- King Parts 2, 3, and so the, 4. The so Scorpion the, King is one of my favorite movies. No, I know, but most everyone I yeah. know thinks it's like one of the worst movies ever well, made sure. on the planet. Sure. So it's as a kid, too. I loved this movie. I mean, this yeah. was a great movie as a kid. As an adult rewatching it, yes, there there are some scenes where I'm like, oh, that was great. That was a well-done scene. It had some humor to it, had some emotional depth to it. But I think just a lot of the the scripting, the screenwriting on it, because of the whole entire team that was on it that came from working in TV only, I think there was a lot that was lost. Do you? And I do they... a lot of the. And, and these guys know. I I look at more of the, a lot of the technical stuff. So I think it just it was less. Plus, all the fucking product placement. Yeah. Was so much more over. It was almost on the level of Josie and the Pussycats. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> we also have Josh Payas, who's the voice of Raphael. He and the others, everyone that was in this movie, uh, they, they did the voices except for Donatello, were in the suits at the same time. They were still acting. But Josh Payas, uh, he had problems with the mask due to extreme claustrophobia. Uh, he would remove the mask after every single take. Wow. Yeah, he did not like... He said in an interview that... He said, imagine being in... Uh, what's the train station in New York City? Grand Central. Thank you. Grand Madison S- Square Gardens. Grand Central <laughs> Station at peak rush hour and put a bucket on your head. And he said, that's what it sounded like. That with sounds all, with, with all the gears worrying. That's the only way I can working. get off now. <laughs> <laughs> I would wow. just like to say the martial arts were so impressive. For those suits? Oh, my God. Oh, my yeah. God. With lips and shit. My girlfriend and I were watching it, and she does, like, stage shows and shit. We were both just like, oh, my God, that's got to be so fucking miserable. <laughs> oh, you're wearing 100 pounds of gear and rubber. On your shoulders. Yeah. Oh, my like, God. And just the fucking, like, face helmet. And you can't bend your back or... You yeah. can't Awful. see. Awful. Yeah. And this was Raphael? Yeah. I'd say chaotic good. <laughs> I was going to go neutral good. He's not interested in the laws of mankind or ninja. He kind of does his own thing. So That's why lines. I'd say chaotic. Yeah, chaotic uh, maybe a, bou- 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 a mix of the two. I think he bounces quite a few times. It's tough with the turtles because you have to, again, what we did with Labyrinth is we talked about one of the traits that you have to consider that all of these characters have is teenager. And teenager yeah. can yeah, they're all trade 15. outside of alignment. That's true. So I think he's neutral good teen angst. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, we also have Brian Tochi, uh, Robbie Rist, and Kevin Clash, who was the voice of Splinter. Robbie who- Rist sounds like a porn actor. Uh, Kevin Clash was also the voice of Elmo on Sesame Street. Street. Yeah. Like Robbie Elmo. Yeah. <laughs> And then we have one of the early movies for one of my favorite actors, Sam Rockwell, who's in this. I know. He was the head thug. Young little Sam yeah. Rockwell. Yep. Yeah, who, yeah, Sam Rockwell. Who was yeah. in, uh, if, for those that don't know, if don't follow him at all, Moon, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, The Green Mile, the reboot of Poltergeist, which is an underrated film in my wait, opinion. Wait, wait, wait. He He's wasn't also a, in he, Choke. He was not a foot soldier. He was one of the kids, He was right? head thug. Was, was, he, one was the, he the one with the dangly one ear pierced? Probably. Was, I, I, yeah, I think so. I thought I recognized yeah. him. <laughs> can, can I just mention that everyone at home, that Dusty just made giant air quotes? Yes. <laughs> uh, and then he was also in Charlie's Angels and Galaxy Quest, to name a few. Now, Ooh, is Galaxy Guy, Quest on the list? Yeah, it's it somewhere is. on That's also. right. Yeah. I remember him now. He, he was, played Guy. Yeah. Guy Flakeman. Yeah. Oh, my God. He was I love basically that guy. the red shirt of yes. the entire yeah. crew. And the red shirt of the TMNT film. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, He didn't die, but like he could have at any moment. <laughs> <laughs> so the orig- on the original notes of the casting for this movie, uh, in the 1980s, the first pitch by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, what they did for this film, was they, got it, the, they wanted to work with Roger Corman in his New World Pictures. The idea, apparently, as the story goes, was to have the Turtles played by four comedians who were actually popular at the time. Those would have been Gallagher. Please yeah. do not say Pauly Shore. As Michelangelo. Bobcat Goldwaite. Oh, okay. Oh, that would have been okay. who? I, I, I don't know. Who, maybe oh. Donatello? Donatello. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Donatello and Mikey had this really cool, like, outside character actor relationship. That yeah, I really so, who was the first one you said? Uh, Gallagher. Gallagher, Gallagher and Bobcat, Goldthwait. Yeah, I could see that. Mike okay. And then Billy Crystal. Ooh, Raphael. Raphael. And, right? then, and then one of my favorite comedians from the 80s, Sam Kinison. Leonardo. Oh, oh my, my God. God. That- Leonardo <laughs> and Sam Kinison. Dude, I just got <laughs> really excited for that. Oh, God. I want to see this movie. I know. No, no, it's, because it's, it's my turn for scorn because. I don't want to see that movie. I, well, no, I don't, no, don't want to like see it, but I'd, 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 see a, I'd see a test footage run. No, yeah. I, would, I wouldn't with Roger, pay money. With yeah. Roger Corman doing it, maybe, but the actors are supposed to be dressed in turtle shells, Uh-oh. obviously. So Roger Corman was Death Race Roger Corman? That Roger Corman, yeah. yes. Isn't Roger Corman the, the, the spice king with, the, with all of his spices? <laughs> what? I have no clue. No, no, no. McCormick Spices, right? Oh, no, oh, no, no. That's no. a long McCormick. stretch, but I like no, that. No, no. <laughs> that's the restaurant guy, McCormick and Schmidt. Um, oh, McCormick and Schmidt. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Schmick. So the actors Schmick. were supposed to be dressed in turtle shells and then have their arms and legs painted green. No no suits. They were just supposed to be painted. That's stupid. Okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm over yeah. it. Another I'm treatment, over it. Another treatment yeah. at the time uh, was to turn the turtles into an R-rated film. And that included a scene with partially nude nuns on roller skates. I was going to say, why? Yeah, I'm back on board. <laughs> so that's the only way I can get off. <laughs> I, is everyone at the table as here, Morty, right? <laughs> yeah. Familiar with the porn of oh, with with, with April O'Neil, the porn April. actress. Why no? I've never April seen O'Neil. it because my wait. girlfriend listens to my podcast. Uh huh. <laughs> wink, wink, wink. It's wink. real nudge, fucking nudge. weird. What does she think? What's that? What does she think of our podcast? Oh, she likes it. Oh, good, oh. good. But back to the porn. Same there, way. there is Which a I've teenage mutant ninja not turtle scene. But... <laughs> wink, 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 wink. Not wink. seen. Super no one, wink. N- definitely, no one's seen it. <laughs> no. There's a porn actress who goes by April O'Neil, mm-hmm. and guess who plays April O'Neil in the pornography? That's movie? her. It, it, it is her. Then we have Brian Tochi, who is the voice of Leonardo. Let me, re- let, me, let me redo that. No, 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 no. no keep going. <laughs> Do it. Voice of who? Leonardo. <laughs> Leonardo. <laughs> it's uh, me, Leonardo. We can agree on lawful good, right? Absolutely. Yeah, everyone I think is here. Paladin. Well, hold on. Yeah. Has he been in anything else that you remember that you could find out? He literally Brian has Tochi, he did a lot of like just inane voice stuff. So nothing, all like TV stuff. Okay. Uh, and then we have... Robbie Rist, who is the voice of Michelangelo. Chaotic good. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure he that's a porno name. <laughs> Robbie Rist? Because it's wrist? as thick as his wrist. Oh, he goes, he burn. Goes deep in. Deep into the wrist. 
What else has he been in? Sure uh, Robbie. Ri- oh, actually, he was a voice in Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets. Uh, oh my God, your favorite movie. He Matthew. was uh, Fuck, I Dogen Fuck, Dagui. I, hate that movie. I don't remember. I don't. I don't remember what character. What? Say that word again. Dogen Dagui. Dogen Dagui. Yeah. No, I remember. Oh, good old Dogen. Dagui. Yeah. yeah. You know, no, yeah, like we famous. used to yeah, back Dogen. in the day. Do you guys ever get like way into the Dagui? <laughs> He also did. Sorry, no thanks, Dad. Dude. I'm trying to quit. He also did multiple voices on You're the Powder, Powerpuff Girls, Doc McStuffins, Transformers, Robots in Disguise. Also, he did voices for also a good porn Doc name. McStuffins. Doc McStuffins. <laughs> That's we can't make this up, guys. Is everything we a porno can't make name? This up. And there's some animated stuff that sound like porn, like. Angry Video Game Nerd, the movie. That's sounds... never watched Angry Video no, Game. No, I haven't. It sounds no, like it's a porn. Good. That's it's not a porn. really good. Uh, it's, yeah. it's pretty good. Okay. He has some. He's he does it. Dusty, too far. He does a Ninja Turtles episode. Uh, yeah. He was also in Sharknado as Robbie the bus driver. Oh, God, he was. Bus driver? <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm still. Fi- Did you say Dr. McStuffins? Yes. <laughs> Doc McStuffins. You Doctor. Know. You can get one of those at McDonald's now on their all day breakfast menu. The McStuffin? Yeah. 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 Doc McStuffins. He played the character Stuffy. Here's a. <laughs> Doc McStuffins McMuffins. <laughs> Here's a here's a pro I just tip. Can't. If you if you go if this you go is and the order shit a I mine. Uh, <laughs> if you go and order a McStuffin, make sure you get the folded egg. <laughs> it's re- it's a way better product. <laughs> Iron protein certainly. I like to I like to get in those biscuits. Yeah, you get a lot of protein that way. Uh, mm. And then um, we have Kevin Clash as the voice of Splinter. That's an awesome name, too. God damn it. And? People were named cooler back then. <laughs> what yeah, else did I, he do? Kevin Clash, for a long, long time, he was the voice of Elmo on... Um, <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? No, I'm about serious. Weed. He, was, he was Elmo. <laughs> he was also one of the, the, the fire guys in Labyrinth. And he was also uh, the four guards in Labyrinth. All four of them? Uh, yes, apparently. Wow. Uh, was he, he the one that talked about weed or like... They all did. Got, there's some controversy with the character. He kind of clashed some con- he with did the production eventually resign. Resign. But yeah. anyway, you said he was all four guards in yes. Labyrinth? Yes. Huh. They all did sound alike. Yeah. So, it sounds like Goblin. the kind of guy that would chili down with the wild gang. The fire, <laughs> the fire gang. gang. Yeah, fire yeah. Gang. Chili down with the, the fire yeah, gang. He was also, <laughs> also uh, he was in the West Wing, an episode where... Uh, Elmo was on the West Wing. Oh, f- so, oh my God! Yeah. So we can say uh, lawful good for him, I imagine. Splinter, Splinter, oh Splinter? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Splinter lawful was good. so good in this movie. Splinter was one of the best characters of the movie. I absolutely agree. Like with you. puppetry would... aside, like him as a character, always on point, man. Yeah, yeah. I would say this mm-hmm. is my second favorite portrayal of Splinter. My first being the 2009. Computer animated TMNT movie. That's a pretty good one because that was voiced. Was by that Mako. the one with the stone generals? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I actually just finished watching that. That was voiced by the actor Mako, yeah. who also did Uncle Iroh. Oh, and was just in start Conan with Conan. Uncle Iroh yeah. is yeah. amazing. Yeah. Conan. Yeah. I'm sorry. I I love Conan, but Avatar: The Last Airbender. To Uncle me, Iroh is like the. Uncle, fucking best, man. I think Uncle Iroh is at the pinnacle of his performance. I think I when think, he comes screaming out of his hut in Conan, going, yes, "Get away!" Yes, <laughs> that's, so, that's the best. He's that come so far since then. That that's his best role. In my and life, I can't right? help but notice none of that was Samurai Jack. Which oh, Aku, yeah. absolutely. Oh, oh shit, the shape shifting master. You distracted me with the Conan and the shack running and the, <laughs> that. Yeah, but Aku. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And He's, then we have Tatsu, who I really like. There was there was a split Tatsu. for the, no. Hang on, there was a split for this character though. Yeah, there and was the, there Shredder. was a guy that played him who, and I'm gonna butcher this name, so I'm I'm gonna apologize. You don't right good luck. Front. Tell you what, don't even do it. To- Insert name here. To- do it. Do it. Set Toshi yourself up Shiro to fail. Obata. Actually, that's. That sounds pretty good. Pretty close, if not accurate. Okay. Good job. Thank you. Good guess. First, you heard it right here. <laughs> uh, who was the actual actor, but the voice of Tatsu. Oh, he was dubbed? Yes, was Michael oh, yeah. McConaughey. <laughs> that is a very who racist. Is, uh, who is a white guy out of Ohio. Yeah, who yeah. did well. So he's the guy who was going, huh, yeah. huh. ninja, vanish. Yeah, yeah, which he has a lot of... Fantastic. He did... Dragon Ball Super, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles, Mortal Kombat 10, the video game voice of. Great. Voice of. He does a lot of video game and TV. Who was he in Mortal in, Kombat? In Mortal Kombat. Who was he in Dragon Ball uh, Super? He was Kano 
Okay. Yeah. So neutral. Who evil. is a white guy from Ohio? He also played the in the Admiral. He played Admiral Yi Sun Shin. Okay. Mm. I've been meaning to see that. I haven't gotten around to it yet. But he's done a lot of... It looks like he... You know, going through the mining, it looks like he did a lot of um, uh, Japanese anime. All right. So, so and I would say lawful neutral. I would say lawful evil. He, Why no, evil? he's not Because lawful, he's though. all when about he, that locker room scene when he loses his shit. That's because he lost his shit to fucking Casey Jones, and Casey Jones is a punk. Well, yeah, but I mean, his reaction to that wasn't a lawful thing. You don't it's, take no, that out on your troops. I absolutely agree. He beat the shit uh, out of like yeah. young oh, yeah, right, you're right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, the kid. Yeah, Initially, I forgot about that scene. <laughs> but in, in, initially, that for the, the the script for that scene where he beat the hell out of that kid was he was supposed to kill him, and oh, yeah. and then uh, the 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 production company said we need to keep this child friendly so Maybe we need a little to, less need kid killing yeah. do you know what they do is they they adr in a little voice of that kid oh, going the, the, the oh, gas. like yeah. moaning afterwards yeah so yeah. you know you that know he's, he's alive, alive. Yeah. but in the original shot he's supposed to be dead mm-hmm. oh yeah, yeah. I, I thought that too that's really yeah. good um, that was the point that Nat, my girlfriend and i like looked at each other and was like man this seems like a great organization to get behind right <laughs> right well it's that's what family. i'm saying yeah it's lawful evil because he follows a code He's killing that guy, kid because he's a failure, and that's what they're trying to breed is the best of the best. Yeah, but technically everyone on that mission was a failure. He just kind of picked him out to take his spite out. out you on know, him. that's <laughs> true. The foot that's true. soldiers in general in the movie were way more capable than the fucking robots in the TV show. Oh, yeah, I agree. absolutely. Can we, like, can we take a step back and act this out real quick? Sure, yes, what are we doing? So I'll, I'll be the, uh, oh, I'm so mad. Are you Tatsu? Yes. <laughs> I'm so mad I'll take it out on people that I'd have no respect. Sir, I'm sorry we failed you, but next time we'll do better. Yes, because I'm going to punch you so hard. But wait, I was pretty good, though. Like, actually, All if you right, think about here it. comes the punch. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I punch. It hurts so much. Oh, I punch Master, so much Master, please more. stop punching me. I, over cannot, and over. I cannot stop because I'm so mad. It's not fair. It's not fair. I've yes. Been, I've been so good up till now. Yes, you have. But this now is, I'm, I'm evil, and I'm is, showing you how evil I am. It's really demeaning my, yes. my thought and yes. my hope Look for this, audience for this, how evil I am. Oh, this game. Here comes the wrist. <laughs> <laughs> not the wrist. Oh, my God. Yes, Take, not the wrist. Take my that, wrist. Now give that little gasp to let him know you're alive. <laughs> uh, 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 yes. That I'm, gives me I'm power. just glad it wasn't an orgasm kind of, <laughs> kind of sound. <sighs> Uh, you guys Wasn't are killing it? me. <laughs> Wasn't it? Uh, no. <laughs> and I guess then, that's the only way I can get off. <laughs> <laughs> and then we go into Shredder, who, much like Tatsu, uh, was two different people. So playing Shredder was actually James Sato, who's been in a lot of TV I shows. Your porn name. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Can, can, I, can I say a quick thing about Shredder? You know what he needed is mm. more sequins. Yeah, I, I don't think the one piece jumpsuit was enough. So did you know uh, the whole not. costume was based off of a blender? The production notes they made it they wanted him to look like what? a blender. Like, like the part thing you the... used to mix drinks? Yeah, you know, like like his like his shoulder he pads. He looked so and... much cooler in the comic books though. Yeah. Really? He looks so it. bad in the movie it, it was, though. I, I think it was the uh the, I think the, it's the cutout loose fitting in his helmet. Fa- no, it was the cutout in his faceplate. I think it's the shoulders. He had these yeah. big old shoulders, I and then was, that... I think it was all was of it. He was small. I mean, the actor who was yeah. was small I and agree. Lean. The shoulders fed down into this tiny, slim, like, acrobatic, like, yeah, I stick- do gymnastics. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fine, because he's a martial artist, but that <clears throat> fucking sequined whatever... Cape? That, yeah, that thing. No, that, no capes. The, the no, outfit. the bodysuit. Oh, the, body yeah. suit. The, the red sequin bodysuit. Exactly. Was, and then he had, like, a belt. They were trying to make it more. You got to remember, this was 1990. I mean, that was the fashion. Okay, here's the thing about this car, the movie. (laughs) The movie goes like this it's trying to be close to the comics, but it can't ignore the fact that the TV show was a hit, right? I know. So it can't just be about the comics, it has to adapt the coloring and the style and of the, the pizza. animation yeah. yeah otherwise you also otherwise have to you think of the time and what they were competing against this was the dark era of gi joe oh, and well, yeah. the warriors we'll, we'll, we'll get yeah. to we'll, we'll get, get to, to the, the movies, movies that Definitely. was competing yeah so anyway no, shredder I'm not, I'm not even talking about oh. the movies i'm talking about what it was competing with in general popularity toy wise oh, at okay. the time yeah you're talking about high neon both in gi joe and in transformers yeah. well, which were their main competitors transformers the was what 86 
Well, yeah, and, six year old me through and then through the through ninety through the early but very th- early eighty six was the height like yeah. That's that was the out. height of season one, season two Transformers. Yeah, definitely. Of the, the first launch no, of G.I. Joe. It wasn't over there, though. But That's everyone when they made the was going movie neon in the G.I. Joe movie. Everyone was going neon. Every, that's, every, that's, even that's clothing. when the one, the G.I. Joe's that you made fun of me for having with the cords and the little attachments. Oh, yeah, the, the eco, eco warriors. Yeah. Yeah. That's when they were popular. So what about Shredder? What's his alignment? Lawful, Lawful evil. evil. I think Lawful he's, Evil. He's a Vader. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. In sequence, well, I, I don't know. Or neutral I don't, evil. I think neutral evil because he is. He, I think he says, like, if he was going to say, I think he would say he's lawful evil. He's awfully organized, but he's very. But he's more self. Um, what is that? Aware, selfish, S- selfish. Yeah. He's more selfish than that. I, I actually can agree with that. I think I'll, he I'll... uses and establishes organizations because uh-huh. he's smart enough to do it. But he doesn't give a fuck about him. I don't think he gives a shit about the foot. Yeah, it's he just a mean. Shit about well. Everything is just a means yeah. Yeah. to an end for him. Man, he brought he yeah. brought the foot across the fucking Pacific. Well, he understands how to make money. So I, I think he knows mic, the I'm system sorry. and knows how to use it. I don't think he himself gives a shit about the system. What do you base that off of? The fact that he was willing to sacrifice everything just to kill some fucking turtles. And he and wasn't he's, sacrificing everything. It, it was, it, I think that if he were truly lawful evil and truly structured, he would be no, more no, like no, Tatsu. You're, you're, you're talking like he had a doomsday device to sacrifice everything to give well, up. Well, let's he talk sent about his the soldiers out. <laughs> nope, nope. We only take the context of the one we're looking at. He context. treats the foot soldiers as foot soldiers, like yeah. totally expendable. Yeah. Not that's, that's any, what they're they are. just not important to him. No, that's not true because they're top echelon. Like in this movie, the f- the people who graduate to foot are like the top tier of, of fighters. Yeah. They can take on the turtles, like of not this, easily, but the they can do it. Seventeen year olds that he has working. No, for no, no. Yeah, those aren't the seventeen. Those are not. Yeah, all no. of the unmasked foot soldiers are Japanese. Or age, I don't really know if. They, well, I know that everyone, one of them was Korean. Everyone who gets the mask of the foot, yeah, is has proven themselves to be a true ninja. Yeah, right. I and, was so proud of that kid when right? he became a yeah, foot right? soldier. Yeah. Like I actually like welled up tears. I'm like, I'm so proud of him because at that point, Tatsu, at least Tatsu, maybe Shredder a little bit, is is like focused on growing the army. With with useful people, and Shredder is more about just brainwash the masses, mm-hmm. and I just need expendable units. Yeah, I means think, to an end. Yeah, yes. I think Shredder sees it more as a means to an end, whereas Tatsu fully is functions that way. Yeah. So Tatsu, I could definitely believe lawful evil. Shredder, I'm going to go neutral. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Okay. I was initially thinking. I see lawful, it reverse, but, but yeah, I can accept it. I feel neutral evil. That's my opinion. Well, you are neutral evil. I, yeah, and well, that is my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> the movie itself was filmed between July 10th, 1989 and September 9th, 1989. So it wasn't a very long that, wow. span of time okay. to film yeah. the movie. Uh, the movie was cut, edited, and scored and released March 30th, 1990. So just a few scant months later. Did after, you get notes on where it was filmed? It was filmed uh, not in New York City as most of, most of the major shots... Just to get like the trademarks and yeah, and they the did some product. establishing. Yeah, a lot of it was filmed out of state in uh, I think uh, I want to say North one Carolinas. Of the Carolinas. Yeah, I think. I think North Carolina, somewhere in the south. One yeah. of the three Carolinas. Yeah. yeah, the film itself became the highest grossing independent film of all time, as well as the ninth highest grossing film worldwide of 1990, and the most successful film in the series until the 2014 reboot. When when I was first like looking up stuff, okay. I try not to look at the stuff that I think you're going to look at. As so well, I, you shouldn't. I'm trying I'm just like, no, I don't want to overstep your bounds no, here. I appreciate but that. One of my things that is just, just a personal character thing, I never watch anything without also having the Wikipedia page for that thing open mm-hmm. because I don't really like suspense. I mean, for me, I like to know if I'm going to be invested. And sometimes they'll be like, oh, my God, I've totally seen this guy. Pause, look up where mm-hmm. I've seen this guy and whatever. So I was looking at the Wikipedia page. That's why I like Amazon Prime. And it was you talking about pull-down. yeah, with that exactly. X-ray view, yeah, yeah exactly. it's pretty cool. That's why I yeah. love Amazon Prime. We that. just watched yeah. through uh, all of Twin Peaks: The Return, yeah, yeah. and man, that X-ray view was no, so nice. No spoilers. On That's that. all yeah. I'm gonna say. All right, but the fact that it was an independent film, mm-hmm. 
fucking blew my mind. Oh, I did not there even are some, know. There are some numbers yeah. I'm going to get to in a little bit that that will probably blow your mind as well. TMNT 1990 was a, a, an independent film. Yeah, right. It was a completely what, what, independent it's film. Galoob was it? Galoob that owned the Ninja Turtles. I forget toys? who. I for, I didn't dive dive down. I want to say. Of, like, I, wanna I say was Galoob. not aware of that at all. Yeah, it was. It was, it was a, the micro machine. It was. It was. <laughs> it was a completely independent film. In, yeah. Wow. And it was followed. It wasn't Hasbro. I no, know. it was followed yeah. by. Two sequels uh, entitled one first one was Secret of the Ooze, which came out the year later. So they wanted to cap uh, captivate, captivate, capitalize. Thank you on is that it, one. Is it related to Secret of Nim? No. no. Oh, and then cool. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles three Turtles in Time, which where they go back in time and find out more about their samurai. Because they gotta go back in time. Exactly. Which came oh, I thought out it was in Turtles in Tim. <laughs> <laughs> so I will say that of the two sequels, I thought the third. Was better than the second. I like the third one, honestly. Yeah. I really did. Tim, I need to lay my eggs in you. <laughs> <laughs> when getting the movie started, Mark Friedman knew that it was uh, it would have to offer significantly different experience from the Fred Wolf produced animated TV show. So the story goes: as an effort to make this happen, uh, it was made to make this movie stay as close as possible to the, ver- the vision the co-creators had and presented it. Uh, as their original comic book series, but which that was kind fairly of... dark and moody as yeah. compared to oh, like, so, yeah, so but, much darker. And 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 the script was written dark, but the production company went, eh, we need we need yeah. more of the kids stuff. They had to find some weird balance. Yeah. Between... Is it because Shredder dies in the first issue of the fucking comic book? Yeah, I yeah. keep I keep hitting this theme in a lot of the movies we cover, but um, the artwork in there it's it's very lush, it's very detailed, and I I will always take a set in a background that's has a lot going on in it that's not just a background for your hero to stand against. You take your time with it. Yeah. You really, like, look at what's happening. Yeah. There wasn't that much happening in the backgrounds of this movie. Not really. Oh, no. no. I'm talking about the but, comic book still. Uh, yeah. Okay. But with the production cost of this movie, there should have been a lot going on in the background movie. What were those costs? The production... Actually, the budget was... Uh, Fantastic segue, guys. <laughs> The production cost was actually at the, in nineteen uh, actually eighty nine was being filmed thirteen point five million dollars for an independent that's it? film. Yeah, that's it. Adjusted for inflation today, that's twenty six and a half million in nineteen ninety. So in labyrinth, was puppets, what twenty five million? million? Yeah, do puppets? Don't do CG. <laughs> do puppets? That's a uh, Jim Henson movie. Yeah, yeah. Wow. We, that was our last episode. You should you should check that one out. No, no, no. I mean this one. <laughs> this one's a Jim Henson movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, Same I didn't actually know that this one. Is yeah, a Jim, Jim Henson, Henson was movie. not happy yeah. with this movie because of how violent it was. He was went on record saying, "I do not like this." Neither this were not, moms, though. Yeah, this, but this the is, violence was so this is, low key. This is now. Not, this should nobody not be got, a, no. The only one person even got hurt. And that was Shredder. No, not hurt. Killed. Shredder didn't well, die. Well, lots of people no. got hurt. Sorry, people Raphael got... Raphael was people, knocked out in a bathtub for a week. People I mean, got people beat got up hurt. and bruised, but... I, yeah. I have to admit that yeah. sh- that Shredder in a garbage, like, compactor Getting was crushed. pretty fucked up. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty fucked up. That, that's like some Roger Rabbit so steamroll. What, you know, what, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, what? we'll probably get to it, but that's probably one of the scenes that I don't like is just Casey Jones casually murdering someone. That was weird. What didn't Jim Henson like about it? Just Everything. Beat. Everything? Pretty much everything. Other than other than the animatronics, which his shops did, he was not because it was too dark in tone. It was the script was was too dark. He didn't like the violence. But he had it to was know. Not okay. right. we had this talk in Labyrinth about how the script was darker than Bowie liked, and it was a script that Henson approved. And when we talked about the gaming section of Labyrinth, you were like, "Okay, war, war, war." Yeah. Battle, battle, battle. And yeah. I was like, that sounds more violent. And both of you were like, okay, yeah, but there was a lot of violence and whatnot. I, th- and I was like, that was but a I comical think, thing. I think that with with this movie versus Labyrinth, the aside from the final battle, the violence was more subtext in Labyrinth. Whereas this, it was very much like right out in almost yeah, it, in it all, was all what the they were. I'm just you wondering know, what yeah, he expected well, that, from something with the word ninja in the title. I feel he like, was also just before he died. So okay. he could there could have been some other emotional issues i feel like the stakes were very high in labyrinth though like there was a sense of dread like when she goes down the hallway and then there's the uh they're like the The rotating blades yeah Yeah, the cleaners like everything was on its way to like like like, if you don't do this everything that you know and love is fucked yeah like I at least feel like yeah, with like, turtles, like it was still very like what 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 you're good right yeah I'm good all right cool bro exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. how do you guys <laughs> expect to beat me 
Good answer. It, it wasn't. Yeah. There, there was no end of the world involved in this, yeah. which I thought yeah. was very interesting, too, especially for the time, because it was always all about saving the planet. Oh, you shit. Know? You're right. Yeah. Now, the turtle. Like in every other turtle story, there is one. Oh, absolutely. Blue. And every story from then on, blue yeah. beam into the sky. Yeah. Absolutely. But this, no. The, the turtle machine for this movie, nothing could pretty much stop it. It had a U.S. return of $135 million. That's a big wow. ass success. Adjusted, that's a, adjusted that's for a inflation. Percent. Adjusted for inflation, that's $265 million for the U.S. run. International gross return at the time was $201 million. Adjusted for inflation, it's a little less than four hundred million. Fuck a day. me! How what, could they not make two the more? Rental, I was going to say which the they rental, lost. Making you two always ask me about the rental market. I, I, I need to know, Dustin. The rental market on this, the gross VHS only, sixty seven point six million dollars. I contributed at least two hundred dollars. Adjusted that. for inflation, that's one hundred and thirty three so million. So three quarters of a mil, of a billion dollars. Yeah. This thing made in 1990. Yeah. And the eyebrows are important. Uh, Domino, they are so important. Domino's themselves had a $20 million marketing stake. What was in Pizza Hut? <laughs> Pizza Hut was a little less. Really? Yeah. What about Pepsi? I remember the Domino's More. was in the movie. What about Marlboro? But I never saw a Domino's commercial for this. <laughs> However, oh, yeah. I was assaulted on television Domino's, with Pizza Hut commercials. Yes. Domino's, all, and uh, we'll get into this, some of the trivia about Pizza that. Pizza Hut Do- had toppers for their drinks. I had them. Domino's uh, did the, uh, there was a coming out of their shells tour. Yeah. They sponsored Oh, yeah. don't start talking about coming out of your shells tour. We, wait, I wait. watched literally the whole thing. It's We, we could do a whole other podcast. The yeah. worst. So, so for a time, this was the highest I'm grossing. I'm Shredder. <laughs> and I will steal all the music. <laughs> for a time, this was the highest grossing indie film. Uh, and as I said, not even the big bad studios of Hollywood could stop the wave of the turtle power. Uh, and the Turtles did make bank in 1990. At the time of its release, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was the second highest grossing indie film ever made, ranking in $201 million at the box office. Uh, they did lose that a few years later when Pulp Fiction d- beat it out by $213 well, million. duh. Tarantino. Yeah. Tarantino's probably like, oh, what? Your your tur- your little toy your toy movie. <laughs> hey, Here by the I way, I'm stuck in the turtles with you, I was and say I they don't didn't have know good what enough feet is I should ooze. <laughs> yeah. So the movies that Damn, were that was good. Quentin Tarantino could beat it. However, a movie that this big could make this much money mm-hmm. without Tarantino, without John Travolta, without Samuel Jackson, without Ving Rhames, without, without Deadpool, Uma Thurman, without any of those people, that's actually its that's biggest name something. was Corey Feldman. Yeah, that Corey. Fucking Feldman. And no one was going to the theaters movie. to see Corey Feldman. No. I didn't even know it was Corey Feldman until I was in my teens. Oh, wow. I watched yeah. it again. I watched the movie last night. That's and I, I haven't seen it in like 15 years since then. And I remember my girlfriend and I like looked at each other and went, Corey Feldman. <laughs> <laughs> I w- I'd like to add something to what Dusty said about just simply talking about money potential. Is that... Ninja Turtles is one of the highest grossing franchises of all time. Like, it literally goes Star Wars, maybe Transformers, Ninja Turtles. Yeah, that's incredible. There is so much money being thrown at Ninja Turtles. Write those comic books, kids. Yeah, ridiculous. (laughs) Comics, toys, movies, TV shows. There hasn't been more than 10 years without a Ninja Turtles cartoon. No, no, there's certainly or not. show at yeah. some point, yeah, maybe even five. Like it's constantly on. Yeah, yeah. These are the movies that it went up against in March of 1990. You had the 1990 version of Lord of the Flies, which was good. Yes, uh, Blind Fury with Rutger Hauer. Never saw it. Really, yeah. it's a good movie. Uh, one of my fun favorites, Joe versus the Volcano. Great oh movie. yeah, uh, different man. genre. Different, yeah, slightly I, uh, different genre. Tom Hanks, right? Not as yes. many ninjas in yeah, Joe Tom versus Hanks the and Meg, Meg Ryan playing like three different roles in that movie. So Joe versus the Volcano versus ninjas. <laughs> yeah. And then we I have uh, The Hunt for Red October. Oh my fucking god. I love that movie. Is yeah, that on so our list? I. No. It that's should a, be. It should. That's we should a, do that, that with Master and Commander. I can role play the one. fuck out okay. of that game. And we have to hunt for the Red October. And then we have... Gandalf, we got to take the eyes. I'm very Scottish. 
<laughs> Red October's right over that hill. And then also Pretty Woman. So this came out the same weekend? No, that came out this those movies came out the in same the month. month. Same month. What Pretty came, Woman and Hunt for Red October. Yes, in March it of nineteen ninety. It seems like every think, okay, month back then was yeah. a blockbuster. There's gotta be a trifecta. Is there no. a third? Okay. No, there so, wasn't a third big So Ninja Turtles is the trifecta. Yeah, but the movies that were released in the same weekend, there was only one that was released that same weekend. Dana Carvey's Opportunity Knocks. Oh, Fuck that Fuck movie. Dana Carvey. <laughs> no wonder Ninja Turtles made so much movie. It was also what the was only like, quasi kids movie at, the, at that yeah. time. I mean, Pretty Woman, Red uh, October, not so much. Yeah. Pixar didn't exist so, yet. Yeah. Movies that had a similar budget because we talked about the budget for Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles being 13.5, adjusted for inflation being 26.5 million. Even for the time, that, that seems small. Even for the time. It is. Okay, so it to is. put that in, into perspective, when your favorite movie came out, which that, was what Kevin Costner movie? Yes, Underworld, Dances with Waterworld, Filthy Horror Mouth. <laughs> that movie was deemed the most expensive movie at the time, which and it, and it broke the seventy million dollar mark. Other movies that can, have been out that have a similar budget to this movie, uh, the Ryan Reynolds underrated movie called Selfless with Ben Kingsley. If any of you have ever seen it, it's a good uh, movie. Sir Ben Kingsley. Sir Ben Kingsley. Yes. Is that the one where he uh, goes into a body? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, brother, where art thou? <gasps> Should be on the list. I mean, it's just Odysseus. I'm holding myself back. Just keep going. Keep going before uh, I before, keep going. Flatliners, okay. the original. <gasps> keep... Ever after a Cinderella. He's story. flatlining. For God's sake. He's flatlining. <laughs> <laughs> ever after two of my favorite movies ever. Ever after a Cinderella story. All right, that, that one was forty-year-old virgin. Love it. That one's good. Schindler's List. <laughs> That's all right. And Dude, fucking dusty. We are not doing that as a role playing. No, game. we are not. No. <laughs> and also, Anchorman: The Legend of Ron Burgundy. What the fuck? Dude, you're killing me. <laughs> so all I would those, RP that universe every RP fucking day. All five of those movies at the same time. Sixty <laughs> percent of the time, way. it works all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love so life. those are the movies that those are a few of the movies that came out that had the same uh, budget. budget as this. I didn't movie realize did. Ron Burgundy was only about twenty five million. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't realize Schindler's List was that inexpensive. Yeah. yeah, it was an inexpensive movie. One of the things that I made comment about earlier was that pretty much everybody that was involved with this movie uh, had done TV prep work, and that's pretty apparent in in everything else. Uh, Steve Barron had directed it up until this movie. Everything he had done was just basically music videos. Like all he did a lot of Madonna videos. I could see that everything was really yeah, moody. absolutely yeah. Uh, totally. He did follow up filming this with Coneheads in 1993, and then the TV no movie. Gasp. This man is a genius, is what we're saying. <laughs> then the TV movie of Merlin, which was followed by the TV movie of Arabian Nights. Uh, and then the screenplay was actually written by Todd W. Langdon and Bobby Herbeck. Langdon was a TV script writer who was best known for the Wonder Years. And he also did Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze. And Herbeck was another script writer for TV, best known for Different Strokes, The Jeffersons, and Small Wonder. So the, the I can see it. The quippy dialogue, the the yeah. The totally. apostrophes. I yes, just want to say the, the score was awful. Oh, was the bad. score? Oh, yeah. The score was written and composed by John Duprez. Who was known for all of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies? Yeah, mm -hmm. A Fish I mean, Called Wanda, which is a great movie. Not a movie that you think about for its music. No, though. Once Bitten, which was that cheesy yeah. vampire movie, and Mighty Python's The Meaning of Life. Again, none of these are movies that I've ever thought about for their music. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, nothing besides being you know a musical. But... You don't like that? <laughs> no, nope, I sure There's don't. a difference between score and music. That's yeah. true. Yeah. And soundtrack. You don't yeah. like the. You don't like the. DMNT Diddy? Not up until we got to MC Hammer at the end. Oh, there was my not, God. No, really? No. Yeah. That's, that's, that's how we end our podcast. You don't like it? It's kind of it's playful. It's kind of... <laughs> do, 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 do. I love that shit. T-U-R-T-L-E power. No, no, no. That, that's the song. That's the theme song. Yeah, that's we're talking about... the score. Yeah, we're it's, talking about it's, the all right. movie it's music. It's was funny just you should bring that up. Because the director initially wanted a full like punk soundtrack and score that because the better. kid wears a Sid Vicious shirt. Yeah. Every scene he's know. in, he wears a Sid Vicious shirt. Uh, so the director wanted... Hello, all, fellow kids. Yeah, he wanted all like a punk soundtrack and a more punk-sounding score. 
But the studios were like, no, we need to make this kid friendly. No kids are going to know what Sid Vicious is or who that is. And if they do, there's something wrong with them. We need to make it more family friendly. So, yeah, the video game style of, of soundtrack was put in and the more poppy. And then uh, MC Hammer was brought in to really clinch that. Let's bring in the kid. Because that was right around when a too leg- not too legit, but the other one that he did. The fucking skating rink music. Yeah, like, basically. Yeah. 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 I think had it gone with had the the studio gone with the original director that they wanted, it would have been a lot darker. Which is? That was Russell Mulcahy. He was tapped to direct the movie. The feel would have been different. He's noted for Highlander. Uh, Highlander 2. Uh, and uh, Resident uh, Evil Extinction. Uh, it would have been a darker film. All three One of, of which, three. beheading is a plot point. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were going to say? I was going to say, okay, two points. Yes. First off, Real talk. Isn't it amazing the weird shit that gets us into our adulthood, like molds our taste? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like a comic book gets him into punk rock. Like, that's awesome. We don't know about this until we're adults, Mm -hmm. right? Thinking back, I like, why do I care so much about turtles and Superman and shit? It's weird to think about all the things that may have influenced us. I feel like, okay, first off, as a kid, mm-hmm. I did not think this movie was too lighthearted. Mm-hmm. All right? No, it was deep. It, for yeah. A kid. For a kid. Yeah. yeah. And even rewatching it, and I haven't rewatched it in probably about six months, but even like when I rewatch it, I don't think that it is like not violent enough. I mean, it's definitely not gruesome, but I think for the universe they create, it's not really too lighthearted for 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 what it is. Like, I think it's as violent as it should be, and I think the follow up movies are obviously less violent. But yeah, they are with I the agree fight with, that. with the rooftop fight. We haven't even talked about Shredder's rooftop fight, where he one by one beats the shit out of the turtles, like. Watching that even now, I don't think to myself, "Oh, the what a what a fucking cop out." You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it fits for what they're trying to do. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. This movie inspired me and a good friend of mine at the about the age of twelve to run around the fucking neighborhood in full on black ninja gear. <laughs> I think it makes yeah. a lot of us. Yeah, yeah. You're picking, not the picking only up one a out. magazine called Black Belt and wanting to be like. A ninja. That, no, no, absolutely. You've gone too far because I didn't have, I lived way out in the country. Oh, okay. But we did have a machine shop with lots of metal in it. There you and go. That, and that is literally why they can't use the, couldn't use the word ninja in the UK because yeah. of shit like that. Hero. That stuff was outlawed. Yeah, there was a lot of this movie that was actually taken out for the UK and the German And the Germans, yeah. Uh, stuff. Like all the poop scenes. Nunchucks. <laughs> yeah, the nunchucks were the yeah, big thing that were taken out. Like, crazy like do you know why i actually uh, i tried going down that rabbit hole and i couldn't find a reason why so the reason in the uk that the lawmakers thought mm-hmm. was that nunchuck, nunchucks were the easiest thing for kids to make and mimic and they uh, were and okay. because of that those were specifically outlawed I don't know. Minus, minus the have you ever made a shiv well, because like I've made a shiv. You have and to a be shiv, a knife. It's way easier what to make. What the fuck are you confessing us? Are <laughs> yeah. you saying that if we want to talk about things that kids can make, a knife is so much easier to make than a nunchuck? No, well, it isn't. The bow staff. It, let's be fair. The yeah. stick is probably the. Easiest All you need is a broom point. handle. A, and, a long broom and you don't handle. have to be. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to be an adult to buy a. Uh, you have to be an adult to buy a blade. Yeah. But you don't need to be an adult to to buy foam nunchucks or whatever like that. Yeah. So, I don't know. That's the reasoning that I've Incidentally, just heard. Incidentally, all the dowels in our closet disappeared mysteriously one night. Yeah. <laughs> you and all need, the duct You don't need yeah. to be an adult to buy a long-ass piece of metal nope. and a rock. Yeah. And then sharpen that metal. Yeah. And have a jail ship. <laughs> You all right, kids. This here. is how you do it, <laughs> man. That's like that's like. Uh, that's so so, where do you fence the organs after you've harvested them? Yeah. You want to go into that? Well, or do let's you... keep that for some cut. cut Did your dad ever come it's back coming after up getting those cigarettes? Or... <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> Speaking of the cigarettes, I, I like the, the the cigarette scene when they they're first introducing them to like the clubhouse. Yeah, where they're like, "Hey, you got any cigarettes?" cigarettes. And he's like, "Regular, a menthol." <laughs> You can do whatever you want. <laughs> all of this those kids, club boys. Isn't it so weird they show funny. kids smoking? All, all of those kids were nineties tastic. They were. Oh, all, I know. They the were kid all, with a cigar playing pool. Yeah, they were all basically poochie from the Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> Every single complete with the skateboard mm-hmm. ramp 
And the video this was this was essentially Poochie the movie. So the woman I'm, that played April O'Neil, that was one of the reasons why she did not come back to the second movie. It was because she didn't like the negativity that was being placed around the kids. Uh she had said that she enjoyed making the film and she enjoyed working with, you know, the turtles, but everything else was too violent for her. So Plus, she also wanted more money. And I loved her giggling and oh, her screaming that's a big throughout plus, that. Yeah. Dusty. <laughs> <laughs> but she she wanted the fluff in the script, and that was her her own words. I want the fluff, but uh, she, she wanted the conditions on set to improve yeah. within the script. Yeah. and they were like, "Nope, sorry, we're keeping it like this." And so she walked. So that's why it's someone else. But then they didn't. But then literally the next movie, no a weapons. Year later. Yeah, yeah, no weapons, no nunchucks. They you they. It's all fist fighting and barely that. And the yeah. cartoon. And the cartoon. Yeah. You the know, cartoon has practically no fighting, by the oh, way. Yeah. The, uh, the subway scene, like uh, where she's initially jumped by the foot clamp. With, with the sigh? Yeah, yeah, she initially pulls out the knife and is just awful with it's it. It's not her knife. But a sigh, whatever. Who gives a crap? But, uh, but when she picks up the weapon, she knows. You are a fighter! <laughs> yeah. You... You, I, is, I use weapons, not You got into such a big old thing on this. The Sai is not even a fighting, it's a parrying weapon. Well, there's no a, blade. There's no point. <laughs> Come it's on. A, there's a point. Well, not on Raphael's Sai. It had a dulled end. Still Did stabby. You see, well, yeah, but his were, his I don't were think, like little pokey poles. I think that's because it was <laughs> like, for the movie, but I think legitimately it would be really Pokey poles. poles. Pokey poles. poles. That's the technical term. You know, sometimes. You really want a dull end and not a sharp end. My <laughs> point was before you went all, "Where's my fucking cookie?" on me. Is that like where's oh, Waldo? I love <laughs> cookies? Is that like where's Waldo? <laughs> when April loses the size, she's actually a fairly effective fighter with her purse. Oh yeah, a, a she actually she knows landed well. some hits. She landed three, knocked three guys ass over tea kettle before they mm-hmm. they swarmed her. Well, she didn't knock them over. They deflected her. The shots. one April scene that upset me is when she first meets uh, Splinter and the Turtles. And she's on the couch, and she's like, oh, my God, what's going on? Who are you? That's the first scene, I think, in movie history where they meet the good monsters and faints. I don't think that was the first. I think it was crazy (laughs) cliche. Every scene after that, she's a strong, independent woman. Who don't need no turtle. Who don't need no turtle. And she's fucking amazing. And every time I watch the animated show, I'm like, why couldn't they have that April? I know a guy who's six foot three and three hundred and thirty pounds, and I, I faced him in open combat. M- Nathaniel, no. And there's Dusty? there's there's one guy. I'm not six there's, three, there's one I thing wish. that he's terrifyingly scared of. He has leapt on the bar because we have a shitty bar when a rat has scuttled through. Is this, is, is oh this, my god! Yeah, just like April. It's, it's, she. I, I'm, sure. ju- I'm just saying. That there are people who are affected that way, and seeing a giant rat could happen. You know, because if Vince can do she it, she okay, I was out. Say, is this Vince or this is this Maddie? Is Vince. Okay. Yeah. She, she chills out remarkably, however. Terrible. Once she they does. start talking, she's just like, oh, okay. Yeah, sentient. Big ass rat. With. Yeah. Big ass turtles. <laughs> Why don't giant... you come over to my house and eat some pizza? <laughs> seeing a giant turtle with fucking teeth is the weirdest thing ever. <laughs> and they're not like regular teeth. They're all molars. Oh, yeah. They're all like thumbnail yeah. size. They're all <laughs> thumbnail size molars. Do you have any production notes on the thumbnail size molars? On the molars? teeth? No, no, no. But what I was going to say, because uh, we were talking about April O'Neil. Um, oh, is this the short shorts bit? No, 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 no. This isn't the short shorts bit. That's we'll I, get to I, that. I, I lost what I was going to say. Give me a second. Wonderful Sorry. Wonderful denim shorts. That's the only way I can get off. <laughs> <laughs> this is the weirdest running joke. I don't know where it's going, <laughs> but I'm going with it. So with April O'Neil, originally the director wanted to replicate April O'Neil's jumpsuit look from the early uh, Mir- uh, Mirage comics uh, in 1987. Like, that April is very <laughs> Yellow busty. raincoat. I know. I know. No, the comic has a slightly different... The yeah, look yeah. was going to be close to resemble the cartoon with the yellow colored jumpsuit and the big he- big head of red hair. But no one fucking wears As that. opposed to the <laughs> green so jumpsuit glad. and brown hair. They did not. However, Judith Hogue found the jumpsuit horrifying. God bless said. her. And the it's idea awful. was next. The yellow raincoat April wears in the beginning of the movie is an homage to the yellow jumpsuit jumpsuit uh, that Way is wear in the uh, I... 87. We should put that on the list. This was considered an independent movie. Yeah. I imagine the actors had a lot more ability to sway what was happening. Corey Feldman was told, you know, he was paid 
fifteen hundred dollars to come in and do his voiceover. And he was so because it, it is it was an independent film. He didn't think that it was going to blow up, and therefore he didn't take points or gross oh on my this movie. God. And he took no residuals. Biggest so he mistake was paid of his $1, life. $1,500. Because, well, no, flat. I think being a drug addict was oh, I'm one so of them. happy right <laughs> now. No, no, no. That, that feels fine for a first. <laughs> yeah, he... So wow. if for no other reason, can't you like this movie for that? Yes. Okay, <laughs> I will I will go with that. Putting I will Corey like that. Feldman in his Yes, Corey place. Feldman just bombed on this movie because that... I loved him. There as was... A teen, as a kid. There, I think you and every other Everyone like, did. Yeah. beat person that wanted that magazine i never read that magazine or My heartthrob did. or tiger, tiger beat or whatever tiger beat, <laughs> tiger or beat off beat. magazine <laughs> there was an alternate ending i don't know if a lot of people know this there Ooh. was an alternate ending included in the movie uh that was you know changed where april was pitching a comic book at the end of of the movie <gasps> cool. so the alternate ending of the movie was filmed but it was cut from the movie and it included a- april and danny pitching their story about the turtles to a comic book publisher. Boo. The publisher dismissed it, saying the idea of being too far-fetched as the Turtles themselves watched from an outside vantage point through the window. That's the idea they... be far- far-fetched. That's the <laughs> lamest shit ending of a yeah. 90s movie. No one movie. would ever buy that comic. Did you ever see the movie Rad? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. Please tell me it's about radiation. Nope. No, it's about BMX bicycle <laughs> racing. Yeah, never. Oh, God. No, Did you that ever was. Watch is Mitchell it like Webb, BMX biker plus Angel Summoner? No. The best buddy action comic no. ep- Oh, God. That's what you said about District B13. No. Does a, Mitchell and Webb. <laughs> here, here's here's a, a question on like tropes and whatnot. Sure. A wall of TVs automatically means evil, right? Usually. Like if you're sitting or in front of IT. a wall of yeah. TVs. No, or it's Donatello. Yeah, yeah, or you're usually. at Best Buy. Yeah. <laughs> Can I ask but a yeah, quick question? Yeah, you're right. A wall of yeah. TVs usually frequently means evil. That, that's one of the things, like... right? Fish tank. Yeah. yeah. Wall of TVs. Mm-hmm. Evil. Eating or an walk-in apple. Walk-in cray computer. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If, if you look yeah. at at RoboCop, when you go into the into the presidents or whoever the bad guy, the baddie of the movie, the office, there is that you know three by three wall of twenty seven inch Sony TVs yeah. that. Did you know. that happen in the Witches of Eastwick? Yeah, that, right. that, that is a in great things? movie. I was yeah, but the, the televisions yeah. are all suddenly showing Jack Nicholson at the end. Yeah, they were yeah. Wall of was, TVs yeah. equals Satan. A week before the movie opened, Mark Friedman gave a special screening for his partners at Playmates Toys. That's who it was. Uh, we were talking about Playmates. earlier. Playmates, yes, the company that had produced the movie. Mark Friedman being the producer. Oh, one of the one of the uh, the the writers. Gotcha. To his surprise. They fucking hated the movie and declined to produce any movie-based toys off of the film due to the violent content, the language, and overall dark tone that the movie had presented. It was 24 years later, actually, when Playmates decided to finally make the merchandise based on the movie when they released the toys of the four turtles. Well, no one thought the comics were going to be successful. They're independently drawn, too. When you think something isn't going to be successful... Here's a tip. Invest. Fucking invest in yeah. it. <laughs> Man, for five it, bucks, that, that's what Kickstarter's for. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What would it have uh, taken I mean, Corey Feldman? All right, give me 1% of residuals. He'd still be making bank today. Because it's still on TNT, like, at least once a month. And or it, the, the DVDs channel, get, get re, re-released every fucking year. Yeah, there's yeah. always some something small that gets put into it, like... The audio commentary on the German version of the DVD was originally planned to uh, be made and released in the mid-80s before the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon was on the air. The movie was intended to be a direct comic book adaption, but no studio or country except Germany and France wanted to invest in the product project. But nobody knew about that until the DVDs came out. Wow. Every DVD, there's something that gets added like oh hey it's five years later let's add something that you didn't know yeah, about yeah let's talk about the let's talk about the cartoon yeah and special feature to keep buying the DVDs exactly <laughs> whereas wow. now I can just go out on YouTube and watch that shit until my heart's content the dialogue scenes themselves were shot at twenty three frames per second and then when they were played back at the normal 24, 24 frames per second they appeared a bit sharper so the fight scenes were shot at about twenty two or twenty three and then bounced up to the twenty four to make it look a little more realistic and that was a standard for uh like Japanese and Chinese martial arts movies at the time too mm. so that's part of the reason they did that, not just because of the technical side but because they wanted it to have an authentic martial arts movie kind of feel huh interesting. There was one other filming feel that I really did like on a technical side. 
the flashback scene of the turtles, you know, when they were actual turtles yeah. Yeah. and going through the ooze. And then again, when when uh, Splinter was telling the story to Danny, yeah. his, his origin. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that specifically that in the sewer with them being, you know, little turtles, the director, Steve Barron, wanted to go for an actual retro look and decided those scenes would be shot on a fucking Super 8 hand cam. Oh, oh awesome. wow. Yeah, so those cool. scenes were used with real turtles. I thought they looked weird. And a mini puppet uh, for Splinter and the Young Turtles. Uh, and those I thought s- that was like uh, uh, stop motion. Nope. That was a no, puppet. that, was, that yeah. was a puppet, and it was it real and like real turtles. It did. It does. And then it was filmed on, on a Super 8. Well, I that no wasn't idea. a real turtle that said pizza no no, no. <laughs> but the first no. scene the very first no, yeah, yeah. the other one that's crawling around turtles. out of yeah. the uh, into the gunk and whatnot into the well done yeah Please. and then uh the second unit was directed for the, that little portion was filmed and directed by jim henson's kid brian henson brian Bri- brian henson yeah. sorry not brian froud yeah brian henson no froud was goblins and gotcha. everything uh henson is muppets and hi ho this is kermit the frog Kermit the Frog You're here. Better than, than I am. <laughs> no, that's the only line I can so, say. So there's like a whole shit ton of uh, of phrases from this movie that I still use today. Oh I, yeah, I DJ at strip clubs. Um, I I do a lot of things that involve me speaking in front of people, and if they're in my age group, they 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 pause and they look up and to the right for a second and they go, Oh yeah. <laughs> But if if they're not, you know, like significantly younger than me, what, what are you talking about? Why would I ninja kick the damn rabbit? <laughs> Bossa Nova. Yeah, yeah that's Chevy another Nova? big one. Chevy Nova. Do you hold up a bottle of turtle wax and go? <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes, but that's do really you get during the, my private uh, time? <laughs> do you get the roles of Leonardo and Raphael mixed up? I don't. Think All right. So, so I gotta know. Dusty. That's from the yes, that's sir. from the T U R T L E Power song. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, Dusty. I wasn't picking yes, that sir. up for a second. You did catch the throw out to the creators. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I, yeah. I, caught that one. I had that one mind, I'm actually. I'm it wasn't mentioned yet. Yeah, that was Sam Rockwell gives a shout out to the comics creators when he is telling the police to go check out the East Warehouse over at Lairdman Island. Yeah. That was a nod to the comics creators, Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. I like when Casey Jones says, God, I hate punkers. Yeah, so did I. What is a punk? Mother punker. <laughs> Apparently, they run around in Sid Vicious t-shirts. So they say <laughs> they're punks. Speaking of which, one of the best lines of dialogue between uh, not the line, but like the conversation between Casey Jones and Raphael, so fucking good. Cricket, you got to um, know what a crumpet cr- is to understand cricket. <laughs> fucking love that guy. Yeah. He, he's like the epitome of, I'm walking here. Yeah, like, I would yeah. say the same thing. Cause I, <laughs> I love Donatello. I've always, I've always preferred Donatello. But that is, this is one thing that I like. I like the guy, the voice for Raphael. It's just so good. It sticks. Just the Screams attitude New sticks York. out. Yeah. yeah, definitely. There's the pizza dude's got 30 seconds. I still use that today. He, yeah, yeah, I still use it too. Yeah, I don't seconds. order a lot of pizzas, but when I'm waiting for something, It'll just come up in conversation. Wise man once say, for never pay divine, full price for late pizza. pizza. I just can't believe. So I don't remember. Honestly, I don't remember how much pizza was back then. But him saying, hey, that's $13 for a large pizza. I'm like, fuck, was that expensive back in 1990 for Domino's a pizza? Domino's has actually gotten cheaper. I know. It's like 5 bucks for a that's large pizza That's the earwig now. wax that they use. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Pizza Hut, at least around that time, had the regular price, 4 bucks, 4 bucks. Yeah. Do you have anything else for us, Dusty? <laughs> <laughs> no, I it's actually went segue. pretty deep into the mine on this, and, and I could have had like another three pages, but I, I, I capped it here. Matthew, do you have anything that yeah, you want to add? Yeah, I got something that I want to say. There's two more lines in this movie that are my favorite. Okay. And uh, they're both by uh, Tetsu. And the first oh. one is, go, play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. Fuck, yeah. Good one. yeah. No, he did this. He hey, play. He made go. the finger yeah. motion. Play. Yeah. Which our listeners can totally see. Yeah, exactly. And one I still use to this day when I'm getting out of an argument. Ninja, vanish. vanish. <laughs> you don't like uh, <laughs> Splinter's line? I made a funny. <laughs> I love that shit. It's, it's, I think that's lame, but it's I, hilarious. It wasn't original, though. I think I think that's been done before. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Cranston, you got anything else? As soon as I got here, I started drinking 100 proof whiskey and beer. I have nothing to add. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, uh, Nathaniel will take us into the games. Hot dog. Hi, everyone. This is your favorite host, Matthew. 
This week's episode is brought to you by Guardian Games, who we are proud to have as our sponsor. Guardian Games is Portland's largest gaming store. They have almost every game you can think of, be it role-playing, board game, card games, miniature games, even video games. They also have a ton of gaming-related material and some pretty neat swag. I mean, the D20 fuzzy dice that go in your mirror, that's good stuff. If, you, uh, <laughs> if you're 21, uh, you can have a drink in the back at the Critical Sip. Booze makes gaming better. Always has, always will. There's free games back there. You'll love it. Uh, they also have a friendly and incredibly knowledgeable staff, and they are the hub of a diverse and friendly gaming community. Um, if you're in Portland, you definitely want to go to Guardian Games. Cowabunga, dude! Welcome back to the podcast. <laughs> this was uh, an interesting episode. Michelangelo would have done that so smoother. Yeah, try totally it. You too you so you know, you know, yeah. with with massive or radical or maybe awesome. Who, who does the best Michelangelo in person? Mondo Fabuloso guys. No, but you got to think Jeff that's Spicoli. More Lego Batman. You got to think Jeff Spicoli from Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Cowabunga, dudes! That was good. All right, so lead us into the gaming section. I don't know what I should say. I mean, let, let me let me try let me try one. Is it? Can I try? Yeah, it? yeah, go All for right. it. All right, bra. We're gonna get in here. We're gonna. Nope, nope. Oh, no bra. Oh, shut down. He said bra. <laughs> Michael and Joe would never say bra. Yes, he, he would. Did. Yes, he, he did. Would say bro, twice. No, he Mondo said no. Oh, he was bra. He said bra. He said twice. bra. 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 He doesn't say bra. We're gonna right, catch a sick wave, guys. Give it. Give it another shot. <laughs> no, it's past. No, fuck you. Oh, Whoa. Whoa. no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Trouble in you paradise, ain't his huh? bra anymore. <laughs> <laughs> just messing around. You know, when you get home and you take the bra off, that's the end of the day. <laughs> I'd like you all to know that turtles have penises as long as their bodies. That's true. Which would now explains why April hangs around. And Casey Jones. Mm. Yeah, but those turtles actually had some camel toe going on. Did you notice that? <laughs> No, Some moose you on, were the only one that noticed that. Yep, turtle camel toe going on with a moose guys. turtle toe as it, yeah, it's affectionate. Moose like knuckle, it. moose knuckle. Because moose knuckle. wait, is it turtle toe? Because there's two toes. This is a weird <laughs> rabbit hole we're going down. <laughs> Let's go further. <laughs> <laughs> just go deep into it. Basim, Basim, I'll have you lead us in with the, with that cowbunga. Cowbunga, dudes! It's time to play a game. All right. <laughs> We've coming back from the break here, and we've had a, a lively discussion about the movie, and now we're going to talk about some gaming. Holy stuff. shit! Has it been like three hours? Yep. <laughs> no, nah, dude, it's only been about <laughs> two <20 laughs> minutes. Oh, good. <laughs> Whatever. If you cut this shit down to twenty minutes, you're an editing god. <laughs> I'm just going to cut that whole "you're an editing god" part. Oh shit! Because play you it on said repeat. that in a nice. It's going to be that in nice twenty way. minutes. <laughs> but you have to make it like a dubstep remix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on repeat, <laughs> just over and over, and then put it up on YouTube for like nine hundred ninety nine hours. Like Do one of those like Star hour Trek loops. warp yeah. engines, <laughs> white noise. You're I think I'll, I'll remix it to you're like a techno God. song. That's how you're gonna sleep. <laughs> Do it, <laughs> Captain Jean Luc Picard of the USS Enterprise. <laughs> They're taking the office to Eisengard. To Eisengard. God. God. So as we know, there is absolutely. No gameable content here. Yeah, no, I, I whatsoever. Couldn't, I couldn't no. All right, thanks for designing. listening, guys. We're over. See yep. you. We're done for the night. So there are actually. Do you want to do the honorable mentions first? I think we should because there's a couple of games that could. Work. I don't even want to talk about systems just yet. All right, I want to talk about the core themes. We all watched this movie, and aside from one of us who shall be shunned, we loved this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I know I say this as I'm staring at Cranny, but I'm not, so not who I'm talking about. Yeah, I love this movie. <laughs> even look that way as I say it because it hurts. <laughs> the odd thing is, is that he's staring at him. He's staring back, and neither of them are blinking. This movie had a lot of gameable themes. What did you take from it? What elements from this movie do you think? Oh, this was the first take? combat. This, this was a campaign done quickly. Yeah, tell this, me more. Well, um, they had never been agree. above ground. Yeah, I will completely agree with you. I mean, like they, I'm sure they had been above ground, but this was this was their debut, as it were. Right, the turtles were were coming out as a crime fighting force. They'd only trained before. This, this, somewhat, was a, this some was might a, say coming out of their shells. This was a mm. this was a level one Wah. only once. Group. <laughs> this is a level one group. Level game. one group. Yeah, level one. A level one group of total badass. Instead of meeting in a pub, they met in a sewer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's min maxed a little bit. 
because they were able to survive. Obviously, they were passing out experience at the end of each encounter. They have not at the end survival. of each session. Yeah, and they had 15, <laughs> and they had fifteen years of training. Yeah, they also beat the campaign in one session. Well, who's to say that this was the whole campaign? This could have simply no. been. A single this this could have been a convention one shot. No, nah, this, th- this was a whole module. This yeah, whole this, this was a module, module. one shot module. All right, you defeated the shredder, but there's still a greater threat beyond. Or congratulations, you defeated Crang. the shredder. The shredder could have been the monster of the week. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's too much backstory between him and and uh, he can return Splinter for that. He can return. Recurring and he villain. has and yeah. he does. <laughs> yeah, he becomes a recurring villain in whatever campaign is being run. You see, if I was if I was running turtles. Shredder wouldn't have died at the end of the movie. No, he does. I, I no. absolutely he, he, agree. Yeah, yeah. he, he does limped off. Yeah, he escapes. Yeah. He's in a trash compactor and they smash him into pieces. Or he and could we, have been that's salvaged what we think. by what, what was it in the show? Worm things, and he was mixed with a shark, and there was lots of other things that happened. Krang. Are you yeah. talking? What are you talking Uncle about? Uncle Phil, uh, cloned Shredder. He there. That is a thing that happens. Are you talking about the cartoon? Or what? Are you yeah, talking yeah. About? I'm talking about the cartoon. Uh, he doesn't have a clone in the original cartoon? I think so. Well, no. I know in the movie, he, he gets pulled out of the trash dump and becomes Super Shredder yeah. with the ooze Dude, and whatnot. spoilers. So the, <laughs> oh, there are always spoilers. One of the re- recurring th- one of the themes that's laid down in this movie is the ooze, or as later shows call it, the mutagen. Yeah. That, mutagen that, is a, that is a backstory thread that is never really followed in this movie. Random ooze. Okay, whatever. Move well, on. They, they have this like quasi raccoon city in some of the non movie uh, lore of it. Like there's a there's a corporation that does this. They, yeah, they look like create... an umbrella, right? Yeah, it, yeah, it's kind of umbrella corp. <laughs> uh, and yeah, that that's what they do is they you know make you, radioactive. Yeah, and you could ooze. totally delve into that in an extended campaign. The origin of the turtles, the origin of the ooze. Well, and the... if we're not talking about just the turtles, if you wanted to freestyle this, you could just use the mutagen as a backstory for a lot of characters. Yeah. Absolutely. It's almost as if there's a game <laughs> entirely based on that. <laughs> almost. But we'll get to that in a bit. What other themes, though? Right now you have well, themes the ob- of brotherhood. There was the obnoxious kid redemption story, which I yeah. didn't care okay. about. Obnoxious kid redemption um, story. He was a loyalty family. Yeah. Secret loyalty. underground thieve, uh, guild, basically. Thieves guild. They yeah. have a headquarters. Yeah. So, you know, this is the kind of game that introduces the heroes. One thing as I, I really like about uh, fantastically silly things like the Teenage Min- Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, is when they set them in a place like New York. So that when you do game them... You literally pull up a map, and you have your game environment. Mm-hmm. I love doing that in so many games that I run set in the yeah. modern day. I take a map of your city, wherever you live. You set it down. You have landmarks. Everybody knows those landmarks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're very familiar. We used to do that a lot with LARPs or tabletop games like World of Darkness or even post-apocalyptic games. I know I've run a number of, okay, the bomb has fallen. You're in Portland what do you do kind of games? Well, I'm not going to reveal my plan because I have a plan. <laughs> I am I not watch you getting in on my plan. I would love to be part of your plan. Does your plan not involve helping your friend? No. Then we can do the podcast by helping after I mean, the mom. Is that choosing his own sauce? Or? He helps you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you're going to need somewhere I mean, for your wrist to go. I'm thinking Cajun, right? I'm spicy. You have brothers. So you have that that brotherhood rivalry, fatherhood and You've sons. Got, uh, again, you, Leonardo and Raphael. There's there's definitely that that lead sibling rivalry. Clearly, one of them is number one, and one of them is number two. Number three and number four don't really give a shit. Yeah. Because well, they're they, three they and actually four. have this really great interaction between yeah. each other. Like Donatello and um, Michelangelo, those guys are close. Yep. I, right? think they're, I, mean, I think they are number three and number they're four. Just yeah. Yeah. They're just yeah. close. They're the character actors. Yeah. Like the, the Raphael and Leonardo are the lead characters. Um, and this is the first time in Turtle history when a brotherhood dispute existed was in this movie. Yeah. Between the turtles. Yeah. Really? Yeah. In the cartoon, never does Leo and Raphael vie for control over the group. Well, Raphael is cool but rude. Yeah. And Leonardo, no, he's so edgy. He's a party dude. Yeah. <laughs> which I feel is very appropriate in the show. And Leonardo is the leader of the group transformed from the Nova. <laughs> and he's made of poop. 
But bringing it back to the brotherhood rivalry. Yes. It's, it's a common theme. It's easy to bring in a game. Yes. So for something like that, you want to kind of have a game that has, I would say, what tangible hooks or uh, tags that you can bring into play. Because a lot of games, you know, you're, you'll make a character and you'll have a backstory. And the backstory is uh, super complex. A lot of times the GM doesn't give a shit. And the rest of the group doesn't give a shit because you made it in a void. And it's but if you thing. make your team of brothers as a group and you build that in together, something like that I think is something you would want to do together. You would want to make all of your characters at the same time, maybe in what they call a session zero, mm-hmm. where yeah. we're going to play a game, we're going to sit down. Escape so from the pet store. Before we even play the game, we're actually going to sit and make characters together. We're going to tie off of each other's Little narrative hooks. Okay, you're, yeah, you're the favorite. You're the one that every, you're the one that the master likes, Mm -hmm. but you are the second. You're the one who lives in the favorite shadow. You're the star scream. So now we have some, (laughs) sound wave was better. Star scream's such a bitch. I don't know if that's a good parallel. You like that now? Star scream is a bitch. Absolutely. So you would want to have a session zero for a game like this because you want that cross table interaction. Whereas the other two players are like, can we just can we just be cool? And yeah, like, no, yeah, no, let's just be cool with each other. Yeah, no one. We're, we're the cool party over here while you two are rivalries. Mm-hmm. No, no one in here is is mercenary though, and that's something that comes up on a lot of uh, on a lot of tabletops is characters just looking out for themselves, especially if they're new to playing in alignment. It's so easy to just be like, yeah, I'm going to go get yeah. gold and I care about only myself. Yeah. The movie leads you on initially, leading you to think that Raphael might be mercenary because he A tends bit, to yeah. go off on his own. But then it always brings it back. I love how quickly they become a team again. Yeah. Like, I'm very happy that that Raph was only like this... Uh, enemy for only a short while and then immediately it's like yeah you're right we're a fucking team let's fucking do some shots he wasn't even an enemy he was just more a trouble he was a troubled teenager he had the angst he had all the angst yeah Yeah. i think casey jones is a good mercenary yeah yeah i I don't think we talked enough about casey jones but for in the world where turtles are crazy powerful mutant monsters Casey Jones can kind of keep up with them. Mm-hmm. Kind of, yeah. And and that's maybe not as powerful as, as one of the mutants, but still a very powerful human character. If we were creating If characters. you wanted to ask for a sport for a kind of powerful human character, he did play professional hockey one year. This is true. He, and oh, those wow. are some badass motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's the Krillin of the group. I yeah, thought he okay. played baseball. I thought hockey. Was, no, hockey. Hockey? Okay. He was a hockey player. Casey Jones is a good example of a character in a point by system who put all of his points into sports. Into badassery. Sports. All of his points into strength and agility and constitution. Nothing into anything else. He really, Definitely no charisma. <laughs> definitely not. He took flaws as womanizer, douchebag, poor with words. Like he definitely min max that character. He's like, okay, I'm going to make... He's like, all right, cool. I'm car- I'm player number six in this group. But on- <laughs> wait, wait. Only- oh, you all are brothers. He came in the next day, is oh, what yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah, he showed up the like, next it was day. The first, there was the first game, and then, hey, I have a friend. Can he play? Oh, sure. Come on by. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, and they're all like, oh, you guys are turtles. Oh, I'm gonna be a fucking turtle. I'm I like. Be, yeah. I like. My character's gonna be weirded out by that, and also very upset. Either that, or he <laughs> was so April, the player for April, like she was really into it. And the next day, she's like, I want to bring my boyfriend, but he's not really into gaming. <laughs> What's he into? He's into sports. <laughs> oh, well, uh, I guess you could bring your gaming, your, your non-gaming boyfriend to the group. What's he going to do? He's just going to sit here at the table and flex a lot. <laughs> but, like, talk about his sports no, days. No, that's, that's, that's doing it in justice. Play a, bi- Casey we'll play Jones, a barbarian. So. Yeah. My name's Casey Jones, and I can only refer to female characters as like... Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can't actually call Sweet them by Jesus. their names. Has anyone toots actually used Toots in Zilla? 20 years? Like, uh, yeah. Not to get laid. <laughs> Or I think not, my dad did. Is not even in a things. polite or comical conversation. I just know. <laughs> Toots is dead. Toots is dead. So we got Brotherhood. We got the bro who showed up at the second yeah. session. Can I talk about my, you don't think one of my favorite an themes? What was your Sorry. favorite theme, Cranny? One of my favorite themes is that their, their sensei, their, their iconic master, 
is immediately like held hostage and they have to go and rescue him. And it's like, no matter what differences they have, they have to put them aside to rescue Splinter. Well, Splinter is, in, for all intents and purposes, their father. Family. Yeah. yeah. But you could turn that into a mechanic. If you have a group that's like... I think they did. Splinter well, gets captured a lot. If you have a, <laughs> yeah, it's, what I'm it's saying kind of his thing. It's, it's one of the recurring themes. What I'm saying is, if let's say you got a group that isn't quite buying into the whole role-playing the family thing. Mm-hmm. They just want to go forth and kick ass. And they're like, all right, well, we're just going to hang around town and kick ass and fight crime. But you really want to get them into the story... You could introduce a mechanic where the only way for them to level up is to have a teacher who Ooh. teaches them the next things. And now kidnap their teacher. Oh, oh that, fuck. That, that, now we got to go get our teacher back. We it's can't level up. Fairly, fairly brilliant. I like yeah. that. Yeah. It also helps that, like, if you're the DM, like, you you role play Splinter as, like, the coolest fucking guy that ever existed. The most peaceful, like, level headed dude. That ever existed in life. With just this wealth of information. Yeah, well, you yeah. want him on your side. Yeah. He's your plot tool. He's, yeah. Absolutely. He, he tells he tells the group. He he the, the episode starts. Splinter is there giving them he He's introduces meditating. you introduce each session or each adventure with a new quip of wisdom from the mentor. And maybe you introduce a minor conflict in the group. And then you get to tie that into some kind of an Aesopian moral lesson. Yeah, I think it would it would be really handy to have like the I Ching or something like that at the table, yeah. something with a, a whole bunch of Eastern wisdom that's a paragraph or less. I am, you, play, you know, I am playing a monk in a fifth a ed game cookie. right now, and I haven't played a monk since I was a teenager. But this time I decided I wanted to play the the weirdly quipping monk. So I have on my tablet that I use to game, I have five different website opens that I can, in each one, you just refresh the website and it gives you a different new random wise sounding quote. <laughs> my favorite <laughs> one is the Deepak Chopra one. I think, I hope I got that name right. Deepak Chopra. Deepak Chopra, I think. Yeah. Is, yeah. It's just random Deepak Chopra quotes. And they are all so wonderful because they make no sense, but out of contents they out of context they sound incredibly wise. Yeah, so you could have a random Deepak Chopra quote generator if you wanted to truly portray Master. Someone Splinter. designed that and made a website for it. When an alligator opens its mouth wide, it comes down with such force that you will truly know who is the master. Never stick your dick in alligator. Confucius says those who dream of pudding will wake up with with dreams of their butt. <laughs> he who stand no, on no, toilet. No, just, just period, right there. <laughs> dreams he who stand pot. on toilet, high on pot. I've heard that one for a very, very That's long good. time. So, Matthew. Yeah. With these themes in mind, I understand that you've come with an idea yeah, for an extended I wanted, campaign. I, I am not as familiar as these two with... Uh, all the turtles material, but I've watched We're most of the cartoons. Only familiar with the animated. Okay, I've watched well, most yeah. of the cartoons. I have I watched all the movie, and uh, all the movies, plural. <laughs> and uh, for this one, I wanted to do something that hasn't been done yet. So what I did is, uh, it's it's turtles in Japan, and the thought behind this, the background, is uh, Splinter's master, uh, his old master, the the Yoshi. one who was killed. Yeah. Uh, and leader of the Japanese branch of the Foot Clan, Hamato Yoshi. Hamato, that was it. Hamato yeah. Yoshi. Um, actually had a child by some woman before he met this wife that he and the Shredder fought over. Now, that child still resides in secrecy in Japan. Um, unfortunately, that child has just been found. Uh, the ghost of Yoshi comes to Splinter in a dream or, or meditation because apparently... In this universe, meditation, meditation is, is in fact legit. magic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There is a very prominent theme of astral fucking projection. Yeah, yeah. So, I was very excited to so bring you that can into use this. all yeah. of that. Yeah, I mean, you whatever you need to have done, whatever information you need, someone's meditating. Sometimes when I'm meditating, I hear the sound of the Imperial March. That's all right. Is that realize... Usually when you're pooping. Yeah, because I'm not what meditating. He I'm just he calls toilet. him meditating. I'm pooping on the pot. I'm. <laughs> Loud. <laughs> loud. I poop hard you on Don't you the... just hate it when you have real loud poops? <laughs> That's the worst. <laughs> so, daughter, 
Meditation, um, splinter. Yeah, uh, Ghost of Yoshi comes to Splinter in a dream or a meditation and tells him of the existence of his uh, of the daughter, who I thought should be named uh, Yamato because I like the space battleship Yamato, but I think that's a mm-hmm. male name. I think I don't, it would be Yamata. Know. Reminds me of uh, StarCraft, the Yamato cannon. Yeah, that's Which is wave motion battle from Star Blazer. Yeah. Space um, anyway, he implores Splinter to save her. Because she is the rightful heir to the that's Foot right. Clan. That's right. What if her name Ooh. were... Vanessa. Karai. Oh, okay. Karai Could is his I? actual daughter's name. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, the present Foot Clan in Japan is being led by Tatsuo, who did not die and was not at the police scene at the end of the movie. Tatsuo. So as far as we know, he's still Kanedo. out in large, right? And I don't think anything else has ever happened to him. Yeah. No, he's in the movie, too. Remember. He's so what mo- he did was he returned to Japan, took control of the, ah. of the foot there, and business is normal. Um, so he vanished. Yeah. The Tatsu vanish. Uh, he learned of Go the child, uh, probably through records of the, uh, the old owner, and has uh, kidnapped her to secure his place as the leader of the clan. Uh, the turtles must travel to Japan uh, by boat, as airline would probably be really hard to get on board. So you have this entire travel scene that you have to go through where your players have to figure out how to get to Japan. Then they have to find the Foot Clan. Then they have to find the daughter and rescue her. Can I add to that a little bit? Oh, by all means. So I I mostly know of the turtles through the animated cartoon from the 80s. They have a very ridiculously uncanny ability to blend in even though when you see them they have these ridiculous like giant fat baby masks even in the movie <laughs> Raphael goes to see critters yeah i'm wearing a trench coat so people can't tell that i'm a turtle yeah. where did i get these ideas i, I, I hey, hey bogey yeah, yeah i yeah. i i will say that that could probably work in new york Maybe sure. nowhere else on the planet well, could it work as driver. well as it works in New York. I do feel <laughs> like they could probably get on an airplane somehow. Not what, today. What, what, well, no, not today. <laughs> what was it no one can get on an airplane today. This is pre-9-11. Uh, yeah. No, <laughs> the, the campaign um, is set before 9-11. <laughs> no, it was, uh, it was Casey Jones. Was like, he was like, you know, what are you, a punker? And then he was like, oh, what's up, bogey? Because he had the trench coat no, on no, no. and the, the, the fedora. The cab driver when Raphael... Oh, was... he's like, oh, it's just, it looks like just some some guy in a turtle suit. Yeah. Wearing so you're a... going little LaGuardia? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's basically it. They have to find and rescue the... Uh, I like the, it. The but now, okay, climb. now let's talk about... Opposite motivation. Why would Shredder want that? Shredder wouldn't. Well, he hasn't mentioned Shredder. Shredder. Yeah. No. Why picture. would Shredder be against it? Shredder is dead. Oh, are you saying Shredder's not part I, of this? What, what I do or with this saying is, I, is, is I just uh, take Tatsu. Tatsu's, Tatsu's the, the big bad guy yeah. now. Okay. I, I only take what's available in the movie. Okay. Fair enough. So because we think Shredder does dead. this take place you. like after the movie? Then almost immediately. Yeah. Okay. So Shredder ju- was just killed in a, in a trash. Tatsu runs off. He's. Catches he, a flight to they Japan. They shut down Red all eye, the garbage masters in the detention level. <laughs> Goes to Japan, is trying to reorganize this, finds out about this girl, and it's it's the quest to rescue her. April gets them on the plane, because April has a press pass to do a story in Japan. That could work. Ooh, I like that. So why, why is Casey going with them? we got to bring Casey on this. Well, he's a human. He can just buy a ticket. Yeah, yeah, Casey true. just does what he wants to do. Yeah. They could say, hey, do you want to go to Japan? And he goes, okay. Yeah. I don't even think they'd ask can him. We I bust think he'd some be, be like, yeah. yeah, I guess we're going to Japan. Um, you can Dirt do a bag. lot of like really fun yeah. random encounters, too, in Japan. Like, um, you're descended I- upon by a flock of giggling cosplayers. Uh, <laughs> there's a giant mecha. I mean, you, you can get away with a lot of Yakuza, stuff. Yakuza, Godzilla. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff. Teenage you can Ninja Turtles in. versus Godzilla. Yeah, that'd be before awesome. Before you actually have the showdown. Which I think would be a lot of fun. There could be so many like little boss fights and you through could, that whole thing. You could be seeding in little um little like points of contact with the Utram or the Krang and start building up to a bigger threat, like an I really threat. wanted to include Krang because I fucking love Krang because he's a brain. Oh, he's my mm-hmm. favorite. <laughs> um but I was just he's going with not the in the movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I really he was supposed to be. Bebop and no, Rocksteady were in the movie. I know yeah. that's what's the most disappointing. When you we know, do too. But here's the <laughs> thing: in a world where mutagen exists, you can create bad guys with mutagen. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's in the movie. Mm-hmm. You can make a big bad guy. You could do I it think Japan, Tatsu, Tatsu or Fukushima. whatever. I think something, that's oh, sorry. Go ahead. Something that Dusty, something that you said earlier, just suddenly hit into my brain. What's that? Let's take some movies and cross them together. 
So, like Teenage Mutant Turtles and Godzilla? No. Okay, Resident what? Evil. Oh, yeah. So you have Umbrella with a little facility somewhere here under Raccoon You're City. You're all going to die down Doing here. a weird thing with Mutagen. And mm-hmm. then you have Umbrella doing something else in New York with Mutagen. Oh, my God. Suddenly now we have crossed things over. That's it. Done. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> we have a great virus. game right there. Okay. Yeah. There Ninja Turtles go. versus Zombies. Oh... That would That's be kind just of horrible. Yeah, yeah. I think but, yeah, foot are I like the idea of going to Japan. I think that is fantastic. Now, the Ninja Turtles. I think they could find out more about their heritage, about the Foot Clan. Yeah, there, there's there's a lot of little things. That, like if you wanted to play it from a storyteller uh, point of view and less of a numbers game, and you can get some inspiration just... because they frequently cross over with Usagi Ojimbo. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a little bit more time travel involved in that, but. For some reason, the turtles in New York City randomly find themselves falling through time to, you know, Japan mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and hanging out with an anthropomorphic rabbit in a version of the world that only exists full of animals. That could give you some inspiration, but it's not modern. So, yeah, uh, you could watch any kind of 19, late 80s, early 90s Japanese movies and get some inspiration from now, them as well. There's a lot of things you could do, especially with the game. I'm 99.9999999999% sure. I don't know what that <laughs> one is. Maybe it's going to be the last one we talk about. I, I will say that it's uh, done by a uh, a company that has some sort of like meta world that everything from everywhere can meet up in. So like, if you were using that, the possibilities are literally endless. Possibilities are endless. I feel like so it's always good. Something. Before we talk about <laughs> that game, which it, we're on the same page... You suddenly reminded me of two games that I didn't even take notes about. One was a Kickstarter game by Ilo Asanta. It's called The Ninja Crusade. The Ninja Crusade could do this. I have a book. It's still shrink-wrapped. I'm sorry, Eloy. I haven't read your game. I really should. It looks really good. High production value. I think it could do it from what I've heard of this game. But another game that I have a little bit more experience with is called Shinobigami. Now, Shinobigami is a, it's more of a story slash action game. The closest thing I can compare it to is what we did in episode two, Wushu. Mm -hmm. Uh A lot of similarities with Wushu, but your character is a little bit more developed than that. You actually have like secrets that you can use against each other and you have missions and you have goals. Again, there's some dice rolling. It's... It's very similar to that open-ended nature of Wushu, but most of the game is narration of action, and your characters have conflicting ninja goals. Your characters are all representatives of ninja clans that are conflicting with each other. Some of your characters may be allies. Sometimes you can narrate yourself into scenes with other characters if you have a connection with them. It's a really cool game. I'm going to give a quick shout-out to the one-shot podcast they do a lot of actual play recordings they have an excellent like two or three parts mini series on shinobagami i highly recommend you listen to it it is fantastic and okay. it tells the game better than i ever could and the people are really fun to listen to one of them is a redneck and it's wonderful <laughs> it takes me back home Matthew? Well, I, I think that's that's all well and good, but we should really just go with the winner on this one. And as we all know, the winner is always Palladium, and it's always going to be <laughs> Ninjas and Super Spies. You know, you could do Ninjas <laughs> and sorry. Super Spies on this. <laughs> you really could. Ninjas and Super Spies has a number of good fighting styles. So I just I just watched his there, face go, don't, there is a, don't you burst my bubble, don't you blow There is a right Ninjutsu now. in it, and yeah. Ninjas and Super Spies could work, especially if you want to do this globe-hopping thing. You could use that to bring in new characters for something else, which Mm -hmm. we'll touch on that in a bit. Quick note, personally, personally, if I were to run a Ninja Turtles game at my home, they'd be be riding motorcycles. (laughs) You know, there's a book for that. But (laughs) Oh, is there? (laughs) There there is a book for that. It's right there. Uh, But if I were to run Ninja Turtles game at home, I would personally run Savage Worlds. It's the game I know the most. All you need is the core book, and I think you could use a sci-fi companion because it has a built-in way to create your alien race. But whatever, just build a turtle 
with the race creator, and boom, that's your race. Mm-hmm. Select some martial arts abilities. And because Savage Worlds has a really good way of fighting mooks. And the Ninja Turtles predominantly fight mooks. Absolutely. You want to get into a combat where you can defeat eight to ten different mooks with one attack. You just want to take them all down because it's not about, it's not about individual fights with each enemy. You want to have some high fucking crazy ninja action. So a game system that you can have a really fast fight with. Such as Savage Worlds, which I can run right now without any books on hand because I know it so well. I could do Savage Worlds. That's what I would do. However, yeah, that's... but there, there, wouldn't you say there's a better one? I by, would say by there... a, a better company. That's just that's. Let's just face <laughs> it. There's a fake core. Here we go. Here we you go. Mean fake core. Uh oh. I... Out. <laughs> uh oh. Listen. I don't know what you think about it. I've only played a little bit, but I feel like the turtles have such a. Each of the turtles have such distinctive characteristics that fake core, the flaw system, and everything like that could really be interesting to play around with. I'll tell you what, Bassam. Yeah. Give me the Are we elevator not friends pitch. Anymore? No, give me the elevator pitch. I personally am the only person in this group of people who has read or played Fate. I'm not a fan, but I'm not going to bash it. I want you to give it an objective elevator pitch. I feel like Fate Core or Fate is is one of the systems where you can easily have a weird interdimensional portal pop out of nowhere and adjust accordingly very quickly and have the players not be too confused. And I think that running the like I'm just thinking of like Raphael alone would be so fun to play with as a Fate character with all his flaws and strengths that you just be able to do so much with it. I don't know. A system where weird interdimensional portals appear out of nowhere and you just go with it? Did Palladium do that, too? I don't know if that's ever been done before. You you guys haven't listened to our podcast before you came on it, but this is kind of our running gag. He hates D&D, and I love Palladium. And, you know, they're both true. I don't hate D&D. Yeah, well, I don't love Kevin Costner, so suck 16 of them. (laughs) Fair enough. I want to give some mentions to some things that our listeners have told me when I was polling around for this. One was people have mentioned that g- games that we've already talked about, Wushu and Feng Shui, could do this very well. Our listener, Mo Tusano, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Sounds right. The more I think about Feng Shui, the better it sounds in my head. Just have to avoid some traps. Like, don't force the turtles, Splinter, Bebop, Rocksteady, whatever, to use the transformed animal templates. Instead, well, Rocksteady might work, but... Splinter is totally the old master, and the mutant abomination from first edition would be good for many foot baddies. Each turtle having to take different foo tree abilities would fit really well with Splinter having all of them. And, of course, Casey Jones is the everyman hero template. Remember the everyman hero? He had the six-pack and the trucker hat. Yeah. Uh, Our listener, Ben Blanding, told me that the 1990s RPG underground has some neat neighborhood mechanics that would be cool focus of a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game if you wanted to base the game in your neighborhood and kind of build it out and protect the neighborhood and have the neighborhood have like events that affect Like if you weren't playing the turtles themselves, but if you were playing like a a mutagenic species, um, uh, that's actually a really good idea. Like, instead of New York, you protect a suburb. Yeah. yeah. And finally, our listener, Jerome, who uh, specifically has words for us about our dislike, 4th edition D&D, <laughs> says that Gamma World 7th edition would actually work really well for I was going to mention 7th. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, mean, I was, th- I was yeah, thinking that definitely, one. Definitely. A little bit. Wait, 7th edition? <laughs> Which they, I they... believe is the 4th ed version. It's it's a box set. What what are, what are his words about 4th ed? Because I know I ragged on it real hard. Yeah, you, you should did. check our Discord server for those It's probably words. something along the lines uh, it of, is a... you don't like 4th edition? You can suck a dick! <laughs> if you haven't listened, uh, if you haven't checked out our Discord server, I highly recommend that you do so. We have some conversations there. What is it called? We links. It's Half Movies Will Game. Oh, There's a it's... link okay, yes. on our website. To the Discord. And I think everywhere else, too. So, clearly, the winner of this episode <laughs> Who's is the hero. No, it's Rift. No, it's Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles. Turtles. By 
Palladium Games. <laughs> you did that well. Thank you. Finally, we have talked about Palladium. I think every, every episode. Episode. And it's now like, we it's get like a, a lot of fucking foreplay. And this right. is the main course. So this is full. <laughs> this is this the is main course. <laughs> He just he just he just went in, unmoved, just uh, bam, right came in. came to it as boys, but so we're leaving men. There, there it is. is as he drops the five books of, of this the game on the table. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles licensed role-playing game from Palladium Books. Now, oh, this is like I've an old this. friend to me. Now, well, we they, they, I never had this one. Is this the one that brings it into Rifts? Well, that's the transdimensional, yes. Yep. Yeah. Is Wick? that the one with them surfing? No, 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 no. This is the one that takes oh, them oh. into the future with giant robots. We did a two-episode special where we actually ran through the Palladium TMNT game. Yeah, I made a We bunch will of- totally be linking that in our show notes <laughs> because that is a fantastic thing for us to connect to. It was fun. So it was. this is Palladium. We've talked about Palladium so much. A real quick uh, recap about what Palladium is. Palladium oh, so is a night. Early 80s? I, I'm actually... Started early 80s. Yeah. I'm, I'm rough on my... The artwork is history. better than the game. I believe it started with a game called The Mechanoids. I think that was their first published uh-huh. thing. And then they went to Palladium Fantasy, which was in many ways considered to be kind of an AD&D heartbreaker. And then finally they published Rips, which became their flagship game and introduced the concept of the Megaverse. Well, you, you left Robotech out. Robotech. I, I, I was uh, never super into the RPG, so I don't know where it fits in the history. But I understand Robotech was a mega damage was, started. Yeah, and it was also a very, very big deal when it first dropped. You know, it's, every, it's kind of a big deal. Okay, can I point out something very I'm important just, about this Palladium work of art here? It's all done by the artist. It's all done by the artist, but no, I don't mean I don't mean literally the work of art on the cover. I mean that this book is a work of art because. You're missing you're missing some key words here. It's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and other strangeness. Yeah. Key words that make it open up like the world opens up because of those three words and other yeah. strangeness. You don't just play Ninja Turtles. No, you, you can, can play, play any mutant there, animal. You, my my my, what have we here? You can play dogs oh, and cats. We, and, there's a character and rabbits and everything. Let me, let me see. Let me see that. I don't think that's my handwriting. Health twenty three. Alien Vega Tatlion. Cletus Pyle Podang. That's my character. The mutant gorilla. <laughs> wow. He was a mutant gorilla mechanic. Look at his stats. This, this was this was called. an urban dog. Now, his name, shepherd. Oh, so this this takes me back to a Palladium game that I played when I was motherfucker was rich. Atlanta. Yes. If so you if you roll right, everything you get real is rich. randomly rolled, including your origin. So you could create a character who was done through accidental mutation, like the Ninja Turtles were. You could have a character who was come through mit- military experimentation, experimentation. Mm-hmm. Uh, through corporate m- experimentation. And then how you escaped, exposure. who raised you, yeah. all that kind of stuff is part of your John backstory. John Deerhat, a lot of C4 explosives <laughs> is, is what's written here. Winnebago. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> kick-ass computer. All that- kinds of lockpick stuff. <laughs> Jesus. Very specific. Yeah. Can openers. Because the lockpick stuff wouldn't work. <laughs> Sometimes you just need the sledgehammer. I haven't thought about this character in a long time. A damn good van. <laughs> That's adorable, was it airbrushed man. on the side? It was. <laughs> it had a gorilla wizard. Nice. Matthew's reading my character sheet for the last time I played Ninja Turtles. Let me see. Let me see that. Right, I wanna... Here you go. His you name is know. Cletus Pyle Podang. Right, last time we he played, he was actually based on a cousin of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I hope your cousin does. Um, he's he's no longer with us. So, so. Okay. Just, despite all the banter back and forth and whatnot, this is a solid choice. This is yeah, literally is. written for this, and I've played this. This is. One of the few Palladium games that I've actually played, uh, besides an abortive Rifts and way too much Robotech. I would gladly run Palladium for you anytime, any uh, setting. Oh, if you God, know what I'm mean. moist. Um, <laughs> like, really, we shouldn't have gotten leather chairs. But, <laughs> hey, <laughs> dude, they were free. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> but, um, yeah, this is, this is a fantastic game. I've played it before, and... One thing that they they manage to do that they never manage to do when they do when they do an adaptation like this is it it feels right it feels pure the writing is correct they they never go off on flights of fancy that are too far from the source material it's just it's it's good it's solid and when you're playing it 
it feels right. These books literally have comics drawn by the creators yeah. on yeah. them. Yeah, they are 100% illustrated yeah, it's by amazing. the original creators. Mm-hmm. So this game has... This is a, a surprisingly extensive it's game It setting. is so complicated. <laughs> well, honestly, I don't think Ninja Turtles... I don't think the Palladium system is that complicated. My problem... I mean, this. the I'm, my thing is the skill system in this game is very vague. It, yeah. Palladium yeah. doesn't explain itself well. Yeah. And learning how to play by reading a book is very difficult. In order to learn how to best play the game, you need to be taught by somebody who knows how to play the game. Exactly. Going back to Matthew's statement that Palladium is the best, what, STD in the gaming industry. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those that once you learn, know, once you know how to play, you have a fantastic time. But the rules really don't present themselves well. However, this is one of the better presentations. This game was not written by Kevin Ciambietta. Oh, this game it? was written oh, it's not. by the late, amazing Eric Wujic. Eric was... Yeah. One of the staples of the Palladium industry and at the time was considered one of the best writers that they had. Eric then went on to do a few games of his own, one of which you may have heard, which is Amber Diceless. Eric is was himself prolific, and he died in the early 2000s. Uh, I had the joy of playing in an Amber game with him at Dragon Con one year, and it, it was amazing. So anyway, Eric, thanks for this amazing game, and now we're going to gush some more about it. What I have brought are multiple copies of the core rules and several of the expansions. This game was drifted off into a second game called After the Bomb. Yeah. After the Bomb was initially meant to be a very small footnote, like a couple of paragraphs in the alternate settings GM section of the core book of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Did you mean very small foot clan? Absolutely. A very small <laughs> foot say, You note. did all those puns. You yeah, you, you're kind of <laughs> lacking you're committed now, now yeah. man. <laughs> but the writers thought it was so good, and they kept writing more and writing more and writing more, that eventually they released a 60-page or 80-page 60 80 mini-supplement called After the Bomb. It created an alternate world, 21st century Earth, where the bombs had been dropped, And the world was completely dominated by mutant animals. Born of humans or born of animals. Mute animals. So you could take the Ninja Turtles and play them in a setting that did not shun them, where they were not secret, where everybody was like that, hearkening back to the Usagi Ojimbo comics, but take it to a modern day, post-apocalyptic. If anybody's read the Usagi Ojimbo comics, every character is a mutant animal, or is an anthropomorphic animal. Yeah. So after the bomb became its own line, but it was very heavily merged with the Ninja Turtles setting. So every book that they released had information for both games. It's because they used the same character creation. They used the exact same system, what used called bioenergy. So you had a number of bio-e points, which you bought your mutations with including everything from human-like hands to the ability to talk. And the size of your character. And the size. And how human-like. Mutants of the Yucatan is one. Turtle's Guide to the Universe is another. I brought the GM screen. Roadhogs is kind of like Mad Max, except it takes place in California. (laughs) Mutants Down Under, which is Mad Max. Yeah. Uh, two copies of the rules here. Transdimensional Ninja Turtles that springs everything into the Ritz uh, multiverse, megaverse setting. The only things that I am missing are three books. I do not have Turtles Go Hollywood. That's the one I was talking about. <laughs> with the surfing foot clan on a highway. I, That's awesome. I do not have the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures, which expands mm-hmm. things into a number of adventures and campaigns. And I do not have my favorite... Truckin' Turtles. Oh, dear oh, Lord. <laughs> Matthew, you are obviously 100% on board here. Tell oh, me yeah. more about your experiences with this game. Uh, I, well, you know, I was really drunk. It laid me down. <laughs> and good start. Said good sweet start. words into my ear, and I was just putty in its hands. I mean, isn't that um, how everything happens? It was, uh, God, I want to say ninth grade, eighth grade. 
Yeah. Around, eight, you, around about eighth grade. Then you end up with a D20 in your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, nine I had the pirates later. go from eight to close, everybody. I'm, I'm not saying you're wrong, but... <laughs> No, um, th- no, that was my first introduction. Uh, the um, it's the called same the dice bag. Do you want to know the story? <laughs> Please go ahead. <laughs> um, the same guy who uh, who uh, I first played BattleTech with. Anything non D and D, I actually got through this one friend, and he showed me I this. Had that friend, yeah, as well, because we were all into um, we were all into uh, the show, and you know, the movie was just about to come out, and everyone was really excited, and. Uh, Plop the book down on the cafeteria table, and no one went to class for the rest of the day. That's a good like, friend. We, we, we straight up yeah. skipped school and played fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I had the same experience, but with Palladium Fantasy. Yeah, yeah. You reviewed this on one of your episodes. Yeah, we so played I was, it. Tell us more. So yeah. I was a GM, and I was the GM, and um, I made everyone characters with a little bit of input. I didn't randomize everything. What did you think about the character creation process? Character creation process. Once you kind of get a hold on it, it's not too bad and it's pretty fun honestly it feels like they were just so excited about making mutant animals that those are the only rules they paid attention to and they reprint and redesign and restructure them in every single mm-hmm. book all of the after the bomb stuff uses the same things yeah every time they come to because they're setting, so excited about it well every time they go to a new setting they're like all right forget all those here's brand new ones okay so we made cranston a character it was a billy goat with like Street punk attitude, like I mean, hip hop. Was, was he like piece my, of shit? My, like my character was machismo? a was a Billy yeah. Goat who okay. was very uh, full of himself. Uh, yeah, very uh, gold chain. Like his 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 uh, his uh, oh his wool, wool? <laughs> what was was formed into like a sweater vest. So he had like shaved arms, but he had like this wool. <laughs> vest and then he had this big old gold chain <laughs> and his like his horns were like these slicked back horns that sounds what very like grease very, yeah yeah gotcha. that's exactly right uh and then uh i forget what everyone played but there was sarah played a rat and when i when i made the rat i didn't give it any points to become bigger or more human like so it's literally <laughs> it's, rat. it's right. literally a psychic rat with with psychic powers it's the professor x rat <laughs> yeah that's basically it that was pretty good and uh yeah it was just a lot of fun and we we were able to kind of really enjoy the characters and just fuck around for a little bit until we got the story started we had fun with a technodrome we had fun with bebop and rocksteady you know kind of a cliffhanger at the end it was just a short like 2 hour session yeah um, for for podcasting sake, you know, um, but it was it was pretty fun. But yeah, I think the character creation and having fun with the character is the most fun. Part. I thought that was my favorite part. I feel like I'm the least experienced uh, as far as Palladium goes, but I'm always into theory crafting for anything, video games, RPGs, and like the fact that they gave you so many points. It's like, how human do you want to be? How animal do you want to be? Do you want to be super strong? Do you want to be super fast? Or do you want to have like an opposable thumb so you can pick up things? You have to spend points. Mm -hmm. You have have to spend them. An opposable thumb. Yeah. Yeah. Which is important because do you want to be able to talk like a human? Well, you're going to have to spend the points. Yeah. That's why when I made Cletus Pyle Podanger, the gorilla mechanic, I specifically chose a gorilla because they get opposable thumbs for free. Yeah. And opposable toes. Yep. Um, how did you find combat? Because I'm pretty sure that the combat I played in this was, okay, you just roll these dice and I'll tell you what happens. So did you guys actually... So we did some combat, and combat is not bad when you're coming up with martial weapons and swords and stuff. Uh-huh. But when you start getting into probability of shooting guns and aiming and everything, yeah. it starts getting that's a little where much. Box. Yeah. Yeah, and it's... At that point, I was like, all right, that rolled high enough. You hit with right. half of your bullets. But it wants you to count your bullets. It wants you to yeah. to say if you want to aim or, or just do a spray shot or whatever. I don't know. As a GM, I just kind of made it fun. I had I had places I needed to be. You know right, what I mean? Right. So, a lot of hand waving. Yeah. That seems to be a common theme in Palladium. Yeah. And, and that's fine, but I like more of a cooperative storytelling. Yeah. And with this game, at least, and again, maybe it's because it was a two-hour podcast that you kind of have to move the ball. Right. You know, I know all about that. You know. You know about moving balls. I feel like you did a pretty good job of that, though. Well, like, thank you. But, I mean, combat was a 
thing in it, but really it was just about the role playing. Like we wanted to tell a story that was entertaining for people to listen to. Good. Exactly. Yeah. That's essentially what we're aiming to do with this as well. I believe that we could take this and make it an entertaining story. Oh, yeah, I think so and as well. Easily. You, Matthew, proposed a Palladium streamline when we talked in the Transformers episode. Oh, yeah, yeah. There, there's a lot of house rules that you can take to make this magnificent and but somewhat unplayable game and make it so much better. I think it's 100% playable by somebody, run, run by somebody who knows the system my contention is it's very hard to learn the system because I don't think anyone actually knows it. it. You. I, I think even the people who pretend to know it just kind of made it up as they went. Yeah. I was directly taught by somebody who was taught by somebody who was taught by Kevin Simietta. I am three degrees of separation of ga- gaming separation from <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> So like I know how to play the basic the Kevins. System. It's always the Kevins. Isn't always that how Kevins. like all board and role playing games go though? It's they, like they all start with Kevins. <laughs> yes. I was gonna say like Kevin guy. You, you can read the rules and <laughs> yeah. glean glean what you can off of them. But ultimately, it's like I don't know what this means. Yeah, you have roll to roll a find dice. The game. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, yeah. I think the more complex ones definitely. There's a lot of simpler games that are easier to learn now that do a better job of in the text explaining how to play they will they will codify their mechanics like we talked in the labyrinth episode about how both meridian and heroin had very codified mechanics Mm -hmm. like they laid out you do this in this structure and at this time when this thing is called for this is how it works palladium doesn't do that no it's just like, and all right, cool, you have an X percent. Either, yeah, you know? you're like, all right, cool, you have a skill at 50% chance. Cool, go for it. But you're like, what does that skill do? What does mathematics do? How what do I have a do? 50% chance at mathematics? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a 50% chance to know what 3 plus 3 is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Did you study regular math? Or did you study common core math? I think for like, you, Nathaniel, it's probably more like a 30% chance. Yeah, probably. Oh. Especially the longer this goes and the more I drink. And seriously, yeah. that's a lot of hundred yeah, proof gone. <laughs> oh, I th- oh, I thought you were asking for more OGD. Uh, I would like to read just a moment. I'd like to read some of the skills here. An excerpt from the skills of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and other strangeness game shield. Oh, these are not all the skills. These are the usable ones. <laughs> so wait, wait. Does that mean there are unusable skills? Oh, I D&D think so. Has that too. Yeah, D and D has them all over the place. Certain Unusable classes, skills. What do you mean? Use it. So not only are there hand to hand, so in hand to hand combat, okay. For instance, there's hand to hand basic. That's pretty standard. Hand to hand expert, okay. And, and then you can specialize hand to hand assassin, hand to hand martial arts, and then there's different skill levels under each of those. And then hand to hand ninjutsu. So even if you want to fight, there's like five different styles. And these are the useful things, all right? But when we're talking about, like, there's computer skills, and then there's also, like, telephone skills and tracking skills and um, how to use a sonar device or whatever, there's so many weird skills in this that I, I just can't even talk out. Do you know that you can turn into a Mulgara? I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mole. Uh, or a Mulgara, thank you. <laughs> my, my bad, I didn't mean oh, to offend their people. Boy, <laughs> I'm so cultural. We're a pride. We're a prideful race. <laughs> yeah, you can be a partridge or a pheasant or a pear tree. Both under. <laughs> Both of this is on the game shield for some reason. Yeah, like why do I need to know this? Yeah, because it's important. Yeah, most of the stuff that's on that is I for character creation. By the time you have the game shield out, you don't really need to know anything about character creation. Dusty. Point of note, a Mulgara is a carnivorous marsupial closely related to the Tasmanian devil. Then why is Tasmanian devil also <laughs> on here? It lives in the deserts and the bush of central Australia and are extinct in New South Wales. You're great. You sit on your tower with your <laughs> laptop and your Google yep. searches. Yes. Thinking right. you're better than I'm, us. All I'm, we have is all we have is the name Mulgara and then the number 19 next Which to kind it. of really sums up Palladium right there, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> Any more thoughts on the game? 
We've talked mm, about it. I know. We I, have I, talked about Palladium so much on this podcast. I'm just glad that you brought Palladium to the table finally and said it was the correct game because I've been saying it since the beginning. I would play this with someone who knows how to play it because I taught myself how to play it. All right. Calm down. You're, <laughs> you look too excited. Uh, I, I'd be down to try this again, not as a GM, but yeah, you know, I, but I, as a player. I think I would be willing to try and play it. The last time I tried playing Palladium, I was in fucking junior high. So that was a long time ago. That's you like 48 me, man. years ago. You don't ago. even need to ask. Not just that long. <laughs> I'm there. Jeez, I know were... I have some gray right here, but it's not that long ago. If we were to run this for the show, if this does get voted on, this would be Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, and Michelangelo. I call dibs uh, on We have Donatello. stats for the fucking turtles dibs in the book. We don't even have to roll oh, shit, to make that's the characters. so easy. We just start playing. Please make this one win so Bassman and I can come back. Yes. <laughs> and we would bring in Bassman and Cranny to play this game. <laughs> Watch it get voted number one, but then all the comments are like, <laughs> but not them. <laughs> yeah. If, if you, yeah, it wins, but please don't have Bassman and Cranny come back. <laughs> probably need an April, too. We yeah. would probably need it. Well, no, I don't April know. could be I could, NPC. I could take April. April easily could be an NPC, a mission giver. She'll just show up on no, the TV. We know this is April O'Neil with Channel 6 April. News. We'll see if we can fill this table out with five players and a GM. We'll yeah, we could, yeah, we, we could all work space. on the camera angles. Yeah. Hey, it could work. All right. Uh, I, 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 think I would we rather got not them. bring in April, though. April was kind of boring. How and about more we... Mona Lisa or Karai? Karai would be badass. Or any of the other more interesting characters. Leatherhead. Or April well, Casey, what about Casey Jones? Casey Jones, a human with the mutants, yeah. sounds awesome. I'm I'll just be, saying. Fuck, I would absolutely take Casey. The Jones. Ninja Turtles hasn't been known for its actually interesting female characters, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, whoever plays that character makes it interesting. You know, right? the sad part is that the movie April O'Neil is the best April O'Neil I've ever seen. True. Casey Jones. Casey's both a male and female. In that uh, reboot I just watched, the mm. computer animated one, she's actually like practicing with a sword and whatnot. Yeah. So the 2009 yeah. one. Oh, she also yeah. has access to all those sick like antiques. Yeah. Well, in the in the original comics, April O'Neil is secret. Oh boy, is secretly a plant, and she doesn't even know it. She's a sleeper agent clone of aliens. Is or whatever. she like a succulent or like a fern? Or get out of here, <laughs> deciduous. <laughs> damn it. Yeah. Sorry, I was thinking coniferous. <laughs> I'm like just saying Casey Jones her. is a very versatile name. Yeah. Yes. Very oh, yeah. gender open. Yeah. More like it Casey is. Bones. That's from the porno. Now again. it's locked up again. That's, that's from the porno. <laughs> <laughs> that's her. That's his name yeah, in the I porno. Could, I could. I could totally see. Uh, you know, a, a female Casey Jones that was a hockey player and isn't anymore, and just goes out and beats the fuck out of people. Uh-huh. Oh, you could even combine April and Casey. April Jones. Casey, Casey O'Neill. O'Neil. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. yeah, but Casey Jones' whole name is built upon the whole mighty Casey stuff yeah. off the bat. Yep. I just like That's how true. they said that in like Dolby stereo surround sound as I heard it because it was exactly the same tonality mm. as you do. So. <laughs> we, we may have a little bit of experience conversing with each other. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, uh, why don't we take this opportunity to tell people about uh, your uh, your podcast one more time and your site. Oh, shit. That'd be excellent. We have yeah. a uh, podcast called Turtle Power Pod. We watch every episode of the 1980s cartoon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and then we give you a breakdown, and then we talk about how bad it actually was. And some good. I heard some good on some of yeah, those. Some good, yeah. Some good stuff. You know, we have a good time doing it. I think that's what's the, I think the we're, most important. We're typically positive people. So if you really want to be. If you want to hear the sound of two spirits breaking... <laughs> I love always, if always, you, li- if you I, listen yes, to this, that, yes. if you listen to the first episodes, Bassum is really like, no, every episode is great. You're just not giving it a chance. And then his spirit slowly <laughs> dies, and then he he comes to my side. Now we're in season that sounds four. About how yeah, I you felt. guys have a lot of episodes, don't you? Yeah, we, have we do. We yeah. have like because you're going through every every now. single episode. Right? Yeah, we're still yeah, we're we half, we're a little under halfway done. But um, but yeah, it's no, it's a lot of stuff, and we talk about other things. We do game episodes. We do all kinds of weird. The obviously the Palladium system. We do that one. And you guys have a YouTube channel that's connected to it as well. That's true. So we do. We put the episodes up on YouTube as well. Most of them, so you can listen to them on there. But we have. So we keep track of a few things. 
every time they break the fourth wall, every uh-huh. time they say cowbunga. And, and uh, every every weird turtle pizza that they have. Yes. Now, I watched one of these while we were doing our break there. Yeah. You oh, put that in your Lord. mouth. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> both did that. Yeah. We, we, do th- we don't do that for us. We that do was, that for everyone else. So that was just painful just to watch. Uh, thank you very much. Our so, audience some votes. Some of the pizzas. Yeah. Our audience votes on the pizzas, and then we, we eat those. We figure out what they mean, and we eat those Now, pizzas. I remember some of the ones from the cartoon sounded pretty foul. Yep. Um, would you like to give a brief description of, to the listeners of the one in the video I just watched? So we want <laughs> Moscow so, Pizza Special. So during the episode, the person says, I forget who it was, but they say the Moscow Pizza Special. It's like a it was like at a restaurant. Puck, yeah. like knockoff. So it's our job to decide what that means, but but we've as a as a team have said, well, for the turtles, they're fucking weird. And that means a cheese pizza with with normal red sauce, and then the toppings are whatever they are. Right. So the Moscow pizza special, we thought, what's Russian enough, right? So we thought potatoes and vodka. Potatoes, yeah. They don't say what's on it, but it won, so we had to figure case, out what that yeah. meant. Yeah. Some of them are weird, too. Like, there's, like, gazai leaf. Some of them are very specific, right? Yeah. Living meatball Living pizza. Living meatball pizza. I don't it's know like, what that is, but... If that one ever wins, we don't know how it's probably like raw. It's that. probably like raw meat. Oh, like my God. Don't there. say That's that. Don't say that. Tartar. Well, it doesn't have to be like raw, raw. Like you know, As long as it has a function of wiggling, you can yeah. call it live. Right? Yeah. Exactly. What, tartar? That's raw. Meat, yeah, it's just right? raw beef. Yeah, you can have yeah. tartar beef. Oh, God. That oh. sounds gross. <laughs> or, they could, or they could just be really big grubs that you put on there that are still wiggling back and forth. Hey, I hate grubs. all of you. <laughs> One d four damage each round until it bursts. If any of our listeners you. come and listen to this, <laughs> you're giving them awful ideas. How dare you? We're helping. <laughs> yes, um, exactly. So yeah. So anyway, so you could check that out on your podcast catcher. Uh, it's Turtle Power Pod, or obviously you can go on YouTube and look up Bassam and Cranny. And yeah, that's it. Turtle Power or Patreon.com slash Turtle Power Pod is our actual website where we put updates and stuff. Okay, cool. And uh, you, you guys weekly? Yeah, every Yo. Tuesday morning. 6.30 cool. a.m. It's funny. Hold your God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's when it's out for your it's morning not, drive. It's not right. always turtles, but it, we do something. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, excellent. Thanks for coming on the show, guys. We Thanks. really appreciate it. Oh, Absolutely. my God. Thank you so much, so much for having us. All right. Well, uh, the game for uh, this week was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by the Incomparable Palladium System. There was also a movie of the same name, but that's less important. <laughs> um, for this week, I was Matthew. And I'm Dusty. And I'm Nathaniel. And I'm Bassam. I'm Cranny. And we'll see y'all next week. Thanks for listening to another episode of our show. We're a new name in the enormous sea of podcasts and appreciate any feedback that you can send our way. If you like what you've heard, or even if you didn't, please leave us a review and let us know. Got a movie or a game that you want to hear us talk about? Drop us a comment on our website at havemovieswillgame.com or hit us up on any of the usual social networks. We'd love to hear from you. The opening theme music is Rock and Gravel by Sid Valentine's Patent Leather Kids, part of the public domain and found on publicdomain4u.com. Opening narration is provided by Isaac Scher. Half Movies Will Game is distributed under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you again next week. Oh, jeez, that's a lot of outtakes, guys. I don't know. It's too much bullshit. Uh, Marty, go listen to the podcast, Marty. We gotta go to shove away up your butt. Uh, oh, God. Old granddad is not old good dad. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of the show. <laughs>